live from orbit it's talking space live featuring rick moranis don riggles john wayne gacy bandana waddle and frank marie calendar's creamy vermont mac and cheese bowl gear for luffy the 1985 Philadelphia Flyers. A disillusioned Californian crossing guard with mild to moderate plaque psoriasis. Count Chocula with musical guest. Bling bling. And your host. Well. <laughs> 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 so glad that was worth it. My God, my stomach hurts, and we haven't even started yet. Oh God! Oh, for any, for anyone being all the forty of our subscribers, who that new voice is. I think I just named all forty of them. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we got Count Chocula. Did, oh, sweet. I, there was a day where I I sent you something on Discord, and you were talking about something that like upset you. It was like, oh yeah, like part one of the Smash video was just like not rendering. You had to restart the yeah. rendering process like four times, mm -hmm. and you were so fucking upset. And I posted something you never read. It was it was like a quote, like a historical quote. Good thing comes, good things come to those who wait. And Frank. <laughs> <laughs> My gosh. Well, here's Anne Frank. Oh, I <laughs> back from the dead. This is, this is the, the the aforementioned. That... <laughs> this is the aforementioned aforementioned Sheldon of the Smash Bros. podcast. This I is that, that. that summer camp wasn't too hot. Not gonna lie. <laughs> that was not a wet hot American summer. My gosh. Uh, Fucking. I, I was up with that for two hours. <laughs> well worth it. So welcome to Talking Space. Today we have predictions for 2024. Yay. And whatever else. We also have a completely new human being. That's right. Someone new to be our victim. I mean, friend. And yeah, after the mayonnaise incident of Ot22, Ryan finally gave birth. The what now? Hmm? You can't, you can't bring that up. Yes, I we, can. We, we're not legally allowed to bring that up. Yes, I, it's over Not until he's filed. The class action lawsuit is filed. You consented. <laughs> no, I did not. I did not. You raided my fridge and found all of my cum. It's not fair. You can't do this. Well, would you like to introduce yourself so I don't go to jail? I wonder why my tea felt sticky. <laughs> It's a really good thing about my coffee. For this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Hi, I'm Will, otherwise known as Sugar Daddy Sheldon. <laughs> That's not your, no one's ever called you that. I yes, did. I he did. <laughs> he texted me that. I said Sugar Shelly. Sugar Shelly, yeah. They've known each other for a week and they're already sexting. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Fuck it, it's been three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Soyest of boyfriends. He <laughs> don't, don't call me that. Don't call me that. Okay, but listen, this this year's wrapping up. We've had. We, I, I want to say we've had quite a pretty good year for for games in general. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom finally came out. Pikmin Four. And, um, but Ryan, my favorite game, didn't win Game of the Year. Yeah, well, who cares? It's, a, it's an award show. Newsflash, they don't <laughs> matter. So if you've ever seen any award show and felt that anything mattered, I have I have some breaking news for you. None of it fucking matters. Can we get Jeff Keighley as a guest? <laughs> we so probably could. Run we probably ads. could. I mean, he'll be out of work soon, hopefully. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, he'll be, he's got too much work. Jeez. Oh, he'll find work in Twitter. <laughs> Oh god! For fuck's sake! From all the things he keeps posting, but X dot com, uh, porn site dot com. Mm -hmm. Elongated muskrat is my favorite celebrity. <laughs> um, so <laughs> you, you said you wanted to sandwich the topics, right? Well, like yes. start with Nintendo and do some uh, irrelevant garbage I don't care about in the middle, <laughs> and then end with stuff. I have a name, you know. 
Sugar Daddy Sheldon. To stop. This only started right now. I don't believe that, like, Brian texted him that earlier. I will show you. I yeah, have receipts. I well, have I'm not proof. really interested in I don't looking care. either. I will post it. Here it is. Ding. <laughs> I... Which means I have to take a screenshot of that now. Look, look, look right there. See? Shelly? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, does that say... Sugar Shelly. I thought that said no obituary. No, I'm adding that to my obituary. Okay. <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> so, Drew, some of your Nintendo prediction. I will. I would like to hear because uh, full disclosure, I, I'm not big on like predicting things that I have no, no, no like immediate knowledge of, and because I'm kind of like a wavering Nintendo fan, where like I, I'm still getting into it, so I don't have all the knowledge yet. Will is just getting into it with with all that we're doing. You have been into it, so you have far more to go on. <clears throat> you have a, you have more of a record of like what's in your head and like what's going on with Nintendo. So I'm curious to see what all of what you wrote. And I know that we we technically shared lists, but I kind of forgot what was on yours. So you know, Don Rickles is late. Do you think this plane landed? Yeah. Do you think you could start? <laughs> You know how we never start for like 20 minutes. Yeah, but that's not a good thing. <laughs> yes, it is. Cause, Why? Because it's funny. <laughs> um, what gets those people in? It's funny. Yeah, like Jordan. Oh, yes, that's right. So Jordan, our most loyal follower, I asked him for input when we were uh, coming up with what to talk about for your predictions. And he came up with how many new Fortnite seasons are we going to get? So I think we'll start with like smaller Nintendo stuff. Yes. yes. And um and then we'll move on to stuff that you guys are more aware about like um you know the the Pikmin 2 uh, fan remix. Well, why don't we why don't we start with Pikmin cuz I'm the only fuck that played that. <laughs> I I would have played it if I had money at the time, but well, we'll talk about money later. I have I have played the demo and I didn't I did very much enjoy it. Oh, I didn't even write down Pikmin. That's weird. But um <clears throat> I guess there's not a whole lot to talk about besides uh, Pikmin's finally getting its due. It's like, I mean, I, I'm still not going to call it, like, it's not Nintendo's top five or anything, but, like... Would you say it's a resurgence, though? Yeah, and it's it's not like Pikmin ever died. It's just there was a big gap between Pikmin 2 and 3, and then there was a big gap between Pikmin 3 and 4, but it never died. Well, I mean, know? technically, it was 3 and 3 deluxe. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, like, on the Wii, there was no new Pikmin game, but you had Pikmin 1 and 2 released with motion controls, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, on the Wii U, Pikmin 3 came out. It was one of the first uh, first party games to come out. It got DLC, you know, on the Switch. We got Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Pikmin 1 and 2 got re-released. Yep. Um, Which is good. Yeah. I'm glad for that. So mm -hmm. Pik Pikmin's kind of here. Again, it's, it's as big as, uh, like, Splatoon or Zelda or Mario. No, but... You know, it's developed in house. Yeah. You know, so I, in that regard, I guess it's more "quote unquote" important, than like Pokemon or Fire Emblem. It's one of their more well-known, <clears throat> lesser-known IPs. And um, you you notice too that like they were really advertising Pikmin Four. Yes. Like ever since they announced it, like all the time on Twitter and the ads and stuff, and people were talking about it. There was a time like after TOTK came out, there was a little bit of like overlap where like talk of TOTK started dying down. And talk of Pikmin Four was was rising. Mm -hmm. It's not just Arlo, Ant Dude, and me. Like there's more. There's, yeah. We're in the double digits now, boys. Oh boy! <laughs> yeah, baby. Oh baby! I think that's that's another thing too. It's that like I wish Nintendo would really show more love to these IPs, but um, mm. and I which is good that they're finally showing showing it and um, they're treating it like a big release because. Shortly after Tears of the Kingdom, it was definitely like, okay, now we're on the Pikmin train. Like, yeah. There was no... I, th I think even... No, was Xenoblade 3 last year? I forget. Yes, is and DLC came out this spring. Okay, so... But yeah, Xenoblade 3 main game, that came out 2022. Okay, because I remember there being some hype about it, but I don't... It was right, because it, it got DLC that tied in with the other games, because yeah. it's the last in a trilogy. Yes. Um, But yeah, that's the thing, is... um. It became more evident once Pikmin came out that, like, 
Nintendo never really neglected it. It's just, you know, they only have so many studios in house they can develop. And there's a lot of people that will work on more than one series. You know, these huge teams will work on Pikmin and they might also work on Mario Kart Mm -hmm. and Animal Crossing and like Splatoon. You know, there's a wide variety. The company's only so big. And, you know, other franchises like Donkey Kong, Pokemon, Xenoblade, they're all made out of house, so they don't even count. Mm -hmm. But Pikmin, that's always going to be developed in house. That's Miyamoto's baby, you know. Was, oh yeah, Animal Crossing was in house, right? Yes, yeah, Animal okay. Crossing's in house. Because that, that was another one that took forever for them to. These days, to do. it's like Mario, Mario Kart, Zelda, Splatoon, Animal Crossing, Pikmin. Uh, Pikmin. It's and that's pretty much it. Everyone like, else. Yeah, Smash is sore, sore limited. Yeah, yeah. Smash is sore limited. Donkey Kong for the longest time has been outsourced to like retro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. But anyway. I brought up Pikmin just because there's the possibility that we get DLC. We haven't heard any talk of it or any confirmation. It's not guaranteed. And I don't even necessarily think the game needs DLC. It feels complete. Okay. It feels like for $60, you, especially if you yeah, well, like Pikmin package. in any way, you get your money's worth. What do you think a Pikmin DLC would even entail? Yeah, like so, more missions? Yeah. So uh, Pikmin 3... Um, oh, in the yeah. base game, had like side missions you could do, mm. and they released more of those as DLC. Oh, okay. Then in Pikmin 3 Deluxe, um, <clears> you got <throat> to play as um, the main characters from older games mm. in like their own mini story mode that was like a third of the length of the main game. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we could see that with with Pikmin 4 and the mission modes, especially because that's like that's half of the game already. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing with Pikmin. Four in particular is dungeons came back from Pikmin 2. They're just caves, and they're yeah. like, well, in Pikmin 2 anyway, they're procedurally generated. All of the ones in Pikmin 4 are made like they're procedurally generated. Yeah, they're planned. You just go through one variant. So um, they could do procedurally generated maps, or they could just make more caves because they're easy to make. The you know, it's like the same four like graphical styles, but they're easy to make. I think the procedurally generated ones would be pretty nifty. Yeah, because... Sort of adds, adds more of a randomness to what you're yeah. getting into. Yeah. It could be like a, a neat, like... I, I was going to say you could do like a leaderboard type thing where it's like, oh, get all the things that you need in this time and this randomly generated time. Yeah, so. that too. And this is kind of a rabbit hole and I don't want to stick on Pikmin forever, but mm-hmm. long story short, um, even Pikmin 4 included, all of the games are liked for very different reasons. They're surprisingly more different than you would think, just like outsider looking in. And a big reason people like <coughs> Pikmin 2 is because um, of the procedurally generated caves and because as a result of how the maps are generated, that game gets like dick hard. <laughs> that game gets stupid unfair, but some people like it because it, it it's so weird. It feels like Look it really is a roguelike. Yeah. It goes into, like, hardcore roguelike, though, which is something that Nintendo... I don't even know what other games go into that territory. For Nintendo, not much. Yeah. Like, like Pokemon or Fire Emblem <clears throat> have never done it. Advance Wars, Mario... I can't think of anyone else that's done it. <clears throat> but these random maps with, like, giant bosses just dropping on your entire squad and 60 Pikmin instantly die. But people <laughs> like it. And again, Pikmin 4 already gets crazy hard, but it's it's a different kind where you can memorize everything that's going to happen. You can try again and again. And sometimes the penalties are not that bad. Yeah. So, and, you know, there's a lot of things you can do with DLC. That's just one idea. Mm. Um, that might alienate people if they go down that route. <laughs> Well, maybe because they already, like you said, Pikmin 4 is a complete game. It could be, yeah. It could be just what DLC is supposed to be, which is an just add-on. more stuff. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. more stuff to, to add bulk on. up the game, basically. Yeah. Right. Um, it's more so something you get once you finish the full game, yeah. and you just want to have something new and experience. That's yeah. exactly what Breath of the Wild DLC. Yeah. Was. It was just kind of like, <laughs> yeah, yeah you don't need really. this. It's just more. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. I don't think it'd be that resource intensive and the game sold well enough again pikmin is never going to sell like five or ten million no. but it's always going to sell like one or two which is enough of a success mm-hmm. if they did it for pikmin 3 on the wii u and then they made more for the switch port it'll probably happen yeah and it you know it's probably not going to be anything crazy or groundbreaking so are you saying are you predicting that we will or won't get i think we will okay. you know i it's basically like a 50 50 but it's it's not the riskiest bet in the world okay i'm just curious as your as your final say for it 
Um, what other smaller stuff can we get into? I'm going to write down what I've already talked about. Okay. Um, F-Zero came back when we never thought it would. That was a surprise. But it's a 99 game. I would actually like them to... Because I've, I've actually been watching a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of gameplay of the old F-Zero games. And I think there is something interesting to be said about the series. Like, there is... It's certainly unique. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. There's not much like it. Mario Kart's never tapped into it. It's a very different kind. Yeah, it's yes. its own separate entity, really. It's yeah. completely different. Mario Kart is completely a party game. Yeah, like, it's, it's a yeah, party it racing is. game. And F-Zero is the... You know, it's still multiplayer, too, but it's it's hardcore. Yeah. You, you play it's, F-Zero to win. Yeah, exactly. It's more so focused on kind of doing it on your own rather than with, like, a yeah. group of people like Mario Kart. It's high-intense speed, tight yeah, turns. Yeah, yeah exactly. Characters can die or explode. Plus, yeah. on the uh, F-Zero X disk drive, you could make your own maps. Yes. And that, like, to me, that, that says a lot where it's, like, you can make your own challenges and stuff. So it's like, okay, well... Right there, that's that's your game yeah. right there. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's that that alone is like a mode like that 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 could be to me like a Mario Maker situation where it's like make your own racetracks, publish them, and see how many people that can go would be for it. Really cool, yeah. And especially because you definitely need you you could do single player or multiplayer. You could try and have some sort of, like say like okay, um, like in, like in how uh, the Smash stage builder works, where it's like, oh, you have it set to four people or eight people Smash. Yeah. You could have it be like, okay, single player, or the, it, the track has to be so wide to fit, eight, like, so many players. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's that's what I can kind of think of, where it's like, if it were to ever make a comeback, which I really hope it does, because I, the more I look at that footage, the more I get, like, weirdly excited to see it. Yeah, because, like, the SNES and GBA games look very plain, but they're, you know, they're still relatively plain. Oh, they still have a but lot. once oh, you yeah. get to F-Zero X and GX on the N64 and GameCube, GX especially, you're like, oh, okay, this is what this franchise can be, because mm-hmm. those, those tracks are almost like the precedent for Mario Kart 8. Not that they have the specific, like, different anti-grav mechanics, but the tracks are almost designed in that same way where like it doesn't matter what direction you go in you're clinging to walls you're going upside down you're going in crazy loops and spins i i wish i could for certainly say that we see something i mean f099 is already getting updated so that oh really yeah support's going to continue for a good year or two i'm sure yeah I do think that having that sort of Mario Maker track creator aspect would be really cool to have. Yeah. yeah. It'd be super interesting. And that's, but like I said, I think you could build a whole game around that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I would love to see an HD F Zero game. Oh. We've never had an HD F Zero game. Really? The last games were on GameCube and GBA. So even if there was one on the Wii, that was 480p. Huh. Mm-hmm. We've never had HD F Zero, unless you count. <laughs> The Limp Dick minigame in Nintendo Land. <laughs> Which I don't think many do. It was fun for Nintendo Land. Nintendo Land, surprisingly fun. It's a shame that's never getting ported, and instead we're getting 1-2 Switch. And the uh, iconic Everybody 1-2 Switch, featuring uh, iconic new Nintendo mascot, Horus. I'm sorry, MC Horus. Literally a guy with that one horse mask. <laughs> Was he even a character in the first game? Honestly, there might when be is third. he? When is he coming to Smash? He's an assist trophy. Okay, <laughs> there's not enough for a move set. You know, maybe if we get a third game, I'd get it. Okay. God, you guys are annoying, like the Impa fans. <laughs> well, I didn't say nothing about the Impa. You know what? Not even this is okay. Stage Hazard. Okay. <laughs> Stage Hazard. Um, <laughs> on Hollow Bastion. <laughs> How would you feel if Disney bought MC Horus? Would you feel betrayed as an hardcore <laughs> Nintendo fan? I, I, it wouldn't surprise me. He cameos in Wreck It Ralph three. Tick tock it off. <laughs> okay, you can stop. <laughs> that's, that's that's where we can draw the line. Vanessa, what are you doing? Oh no, uh, Vanellope, whatever. Vanessa. Vanessa. Vanellope should be Mario Kart. Mario Kart. I oh keep, yes. I keep seeing people say, "So we're gonna get more content." 
Why? They just doubled the size of the game. Yeah, what the fuck? I, I don't know exactly what the path for Mario Kart's going to be coming up. I don't think there's going to be. There may be some. We're going to get a Mario Kart 9 when the next console comes exactly. out. Exactly. There's going to be. End of story. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. There's probably not going to be much, if any, new content coming up in the next year. Especially Until Mario. the next console comes out, and then you're gonna get Mario Kart 9. And it's not gonna be a port of Mario Kart 8 with the booster course pass, okay? The original Mario Kart 8 came out 2014. God. 2014. So it's 10 years. I feel old now. Yes. <laughs> uh, so you're not just insane. gonna do that. That is insane. Oh, jeez. Is, um, forgive me, is Double Dash on Switch? Not yet, no. <laughs> he thinks there are any GameCube games on Switch. That's why I point and laugh. That's, that's, <laughs> oh, that's actually a talking point I had. I did want to mention. One. I did want to mention. There's a few, actually. Well, I mean, big, big name. I did want to mention how I would like to see some more GameCube games ported onto the Switch. Oh, especially like, would. especially Double Dash. Like, I, I've watched a lot of gameplay of Double Dash. It looks fun as hell, and I think that would be good, especially with how sort of. Well, in Mario Switch Kart 8 works. Deluxe, you can get two items at the same time, so it's the same thing. I used to own Double Dash, and I, I never really appreciated it as much back then because I didn't understand the mechanics because mm. I was too young. But um, when I when I did play Double Dash, it did feel it feels a lot more unique than what we have now. Exactly, it's definitely the more unique entry of the whole series, I think. And mm. something I don't think anything has really replicated that feeling since then. I mean, yeah, you have the sort of anti-gravity and underwater stages, but it's a cosmetic change. It's yeah, not the really... whole teammate switching thing. Yeah, it's not. That was like a core part of the gameplay, you know. And something mm -hmm. hasn't been replicated since. And I think I think that would be cool to bring it over to the, the Game Pass and stuff, among other GameCube yeah. games. I so, think even the original Animal Crossing would be something. I something. I get to be the wet blanket in the room. I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing, but uh, we're. I really don't think we're getting GameCube on NSO because think about really? it. I, 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 I hate to agree with you. Because, I mean, okay, it can be kind of upsetting depending on your perspective, and I get it, but I think it's... I don't want to sound pompous. I think it's, it's fairly evident once you closely inspect what games have been getting remade lately, because, like, Metroid Prime gets a full remake. Pikmin 1 and 2 get ported. Thousand Year Door yep. Thousand gets year remade. Door. Not Paper Mario 1, which yep. is already on NSO for the N64. Thousand Year Door specifically mm -hmm. after these other games. Yes. Yes. And who knows, like, we might get a Fire Emblem Path of Radiance remake, right? Or, like, something like that. Wind Waker and Twilight Princess ports. Do you see that being their main path coming up? Mainly remakes and sort of of older games putting on to what, their newer consoles? I mean, only as much as they ever have. And Nintendo's always done remakes of stuff, you know, with like Pokemon and Zelda. It's just, you know, I think GameCube is going to be a little more common. And that's not, that wouldn't be weird. If NSO weren't a factor, we'd still be thinking that. The reason that they're, they're releasing GameCube games for full price is because... People want GameCube. They want that generation of games mm -hmm. more than ever right now because it's 20 years later exactly. Yeah. The time is right. People are for nostalgic GameCube for it. And PS2 and OG Xbox yeah. nostalgia. The people that grew up playing those games want to play them again. Right? They still feel new. Whereas N64, like you can argue it straddles the line, but no one's going to pay. Well, not as many people would be willing to pay $60 for a brand new. Uh, like Banjo and Kazooie remake or like a collection of Mario Parties 1 through 3, right? Mm -hmm. N64 is just old enough for our current generation of gamers where they're like, eh, I don't know about full price. Yeah. GameCube, whether they remake it or not, companies can get away with it. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's it's not going to be on NSO for $20 a year. And okay, yep, you get uh, Kirby Air Ride and Twilight Princess for free for the rest of your life. That will be... I feel like GameCube was like the last era of like their... Well, the, the, pro, the previous era of Nintendo's like super creativity before the Switch. The Switch kind of getting... I would have to yeah. agree, honestly. I mean, I grew up with the Wii. 
I was born a bit too late for the GameCube. Yeah. And it's the, prime. The Wii and DS are creative too, but it's very different kind. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's when they started getting it's a little more... It's fundamentally different. Yeah. Cerebral. Yeah. <laughs> With that said, I think... Um, I think N64 and GBA are going to be the last of NSO. Um, and this is kind of going to a different topic. I don't know if we want to talk about all right here mm. with potentially another console. Mm. Uh, but um, I, I do have something about that. But NSO, that's later. We're not, I don't think we're getting any more systems because we still don't have every N64 and DS game that was or DS N64 and GBA game that was even announced and. Given how slow the updates were with, like, NES and SNES, um, like, it took fucking Earthbound, like, three years <laughs> after SNES games were announced to come out. Yeah, which is weird. So I think... I'm not saying that we're getting a new console next year or 2025. Like, it could be even later than that. But, you know, the mm-hmm. time's coming. I think N64 and GB are the last NSL consoles we get for the Switch. And then whatever console's next... My big brain prediction is we're still not going to get GameCube NSO, but for that system exclusively, everything from Switch carries over, because, you know, our accounts are carrying over. Yeah. We know that for sure. Mm-hmm. The next system is going to be designed in such a way that allows for support of DS and 3DS games. You think 3DS right off the bat? Not right off the bat. We'll start with DS. But the okay. point is, is that the next, the next system will have some way to emulate the dual screen and touch screen. You mm. know, the Switch already has a touch screen, and they don't have to do literally two screens. Yeah. Like, they put DS on Wii U Virtual Console, you just flip the tablet vertically, and then it's split in half. Mm. Right? I, I actually had to, I wanted to throw something in here. Um, what, what was the, out of all of NSO, what was the one thing that none of us expected? Genesis? Yeah. What, what would you agree. say to them suddenly uh, throwing Dreamcast? Hmm. That's honestly, I think that's kind of out there. I, it is, but I I can see them doing it as like a last round thing, saying yeah, like, I could see it as sort of. It's hard to say exactly. Um, I'm going to disagree based on the very yeah. recent announcement because the Game Awards were just a couple nights ago. That's where we're recording oh, yeah. this. Okay. And so, Sega made sure. that huge announcement. Mm-hmm. Brand new Crazy Taxi. Yeah. Brand new Jetta. Brand oh, new Golden yeah. That's true. Now, if you've been alive in the last 20 years, you'll notice that every step you take on the sidewalk, you trip on a re-release of a Genesis game. <laughs> like, there's Sonic 2 for miles and miles. Yep. There's Mean Bean Machine. There's Golden Axe. They put out Genesis games... Like fucking fruit flies at bananas, sure. and they've been doing it since like two thousand. But as an NSO though, as NSO, yeah, they'll do Genesis because Genesis games are worth nothing to them. They they do two Genesis compilations for every system, every generation. But, but they don't have a lot else besides like Saturn and Dreamcast, and now they want to bring back all these old franchises. Then, then hold on, just 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 interject. R- riddle me this, my Switch sister, as you call us sometimes. But um, let's say let's say new system comes out. Yeah. Let's say within a year or maybe two of that being out, we get another NSO. Yeah. And GameCube. And possibly Dreamcast. I No, I don't think Sega's think? going to go through with it. You because I, they'll do I Dreamcast. Think as of the last couple years, because they've seen Sonic getting better sales, okay. and they've seen Yakuza coming up, you know. Okay. They still have their other occasional um, releases, like um, the soccer management game and shit. I think they are now in the position where they want to push their own franchises more and more as like, sure. oh yeah, we're right up there with Square Enix and Nintendo and, and EA. Like, rather than having Nintendo sort of, for lack of a better term, piggyback them. Right. Yeah. And again, the Genesis, you know, Genesis, they're always just going to shit out like whatever. Mm. <laughs> because that's what they're best known for, right? Yeah. But their other stuff, because they're going to bring back older franchises, their libraries for the Saturn and Dreamcast are going to look more valuable. Mm. So they're not just gonna, you know, have Dreamcast NSO with, like, 
you know, Space Channel 5 on there for free when, <laughs> oh, hey, we're making Space Channel 5 3, and now here's a $60 HD remaster of the first two games on Switch 2 and Xbox One S, and I think they're going to use this new initiative to their advantage. Okay. I think the whole... But Genesis will stay. I think Genesis will stay for the next uh, Nintendo system, just like everything else. Mm. I think the whole Dreamcast on the NSO, and like um, even going back to like Sega, Ma- Sega Master System stuff, it's like kind of that... Uh, <laughs> which would be funny if that would okay, happen. Okay, Master it's, System. It's something do. like that in Saturn. It's something like you can see it happens if like you squint really hard. Wait, no. They won't do Master System. They'll do Game Gear because we can't play those games without <laughs> horrible screen crunch. Yes. My favorite cereal. Yes. <laughs> um, do we want to delve in the... Since we're kind of on the topic of consoles and stuff, do we want to delve into potentially a new up-and-comer? For Nintendo specifically, yeah, Nintendo specifically. Or do we want to come back to this? Because I feel like Ryan, you have partic- you have some stuff. You I think we say. get it out of the way. I, yeah. I, I'm it could be fun to get out. Yeah, I, I don't say, have much to say. I'd I, say why not? We've all been thinking it for the last six months. Exactly. Yeah. Now the Switch came out in what twenty March twenty seventeen. Twenty seventeen. Wow. I I am predicting. There, there's there's fewer ways you could start a better system off, and in my opinion. You started off with Metroid Prime 4. Ooh. And the, here's the thing about why I think this is because, A, we haven't heard much as far as... Well, all we've heard is development's going good. Right. And it doesn't have to be a Switch launch. I'm thinking it can just be announced as, like, hey, get ready. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because we may not have any gameplay to show you. As far as Prime 4, I have a trailer slash teaser. Like maybe even just like art. It's finally time. I I think I think it is because <laughs> the second coming is among us. What, when did that game get announced again? E three, twenty seventeen. It was shown alongside other games that we've definitely never seen released for years now since, like Yoshi's Woolly World oh, and God. Mario Odyssey. <laughs> The game, the game. I'm sorry, oh, Yoshi's God. Crafted World, the iconic masterpiece. I well, also it's just because like I see a lot of what they've been doing with Metroid Dread, obviously, and then you consider Metroid Prime, and we might even just get Prime, Trump Prime Two or Three Remaster might be a thing. Yeah, although I news, news seems yeah. to relate that that would be kind of difficult, mm-hmm. but um. I don't, sure I don't it think be. it'll be a full remaster. They'll probably just be basic ports like Pikmin 1 and 2. Probably. But um, it could be just that. But I do think that if Nintendo is as innovative as they say, they have to realize that there's been a problem with their 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 tech for a little while to where there needs to be an upgrade. Mm. We just got like our 17th update for the Switch. And it's like, okay, it, it's still a console that has life, yes, but it's fading. Yeah. I mean, we're coming up in it being, what, eight years old? The, this console has had literally two major Zelda releases. That's that's saying something considering how long it takes for them to make a Zelda game. Granted, one of them was a Wii U game. <laughs> but still. <laughs> yeah, but it's still a Zelda game, release nonetheless. It's, it you know, speaking of, speaking of, to get this out of the way before I transition to the next part of this, um, do you think Metroid Prime 4... Is like Twilight Princess and Breath of the Wild, where it comes out on both systems. Because some people say, argue it has to because they advertised it for the system. I would think it has to, honestly. Yeah. I honestly am different. I think it can be a Switch Two exclusive type thing because it could a, draw sales to that. That it could release. draw sales to that. Yeah. And not only that, but um, they could use the better specs for it. Mm-hmm. Right to where if they let's say they were using it for the switch, it'd have to be noticeably downgraded to whatever they needed. Well, yeah. okay, we're if it's like that level of sort of. I'm not necessarily saying demand. I. I'm not necessarily saying this can't be the case, but we're all assuming that the the switch to, if it even is a switch, if it, is, it, it yeah. probably is. I have no granted. idea. Granted. Because they love their their mobile handhelds. Yeah, yeah, and you know we don't have another mobile system right now, so they're probably going to do the two and one thing again. The but re- we're assuming here that it's going to be that noticeable of a jump up, and it could be. It I'm not could. even saying it has to be a major jump up. I'm just saying it, it like 
Oh, for sure. It'll like have no one's better saying, things going, right? Given the technology that we have now, yeah, yeah, no one's gonna argue that the next system is gonna be a mobile PS5. I I know that for sure. No. But like, the Switch isn't quite on the level of like PS4, Xbox One. It's yeah. probably like in between those generations. Yeah. Do you think it'll be like at that level, like PS4, Xbox One? Mm. I'm expecting at least base PS4 quality. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, same thing. I, I I'm think not they expecting can pull PS4 it off. One um, one thing I am worried about the new console if it does come out is. I've heard someone else put it. It's basically like the Nintendo paradox where they have a really, really successful release. And then that one that flops, you know, you have like the, the Wii, then the Wii U and then the Switch, you know, it's well, something like that. I think the problem with that is and I guess you could factor in the GameCube, too, because that kind of underperforms sales wise as well. Well, here's the thing is you're just looking at consoles with that. It's it's more complicated when you count their handhelds right because their handhelds have always sold very well oh yeah that's true they're much cheaper and plus you know you can have more of them right because you know you only have like basically you can only have like maybe like one system per household but every family member can have their own little handheld not only that but like let's say this new potential switch whatever who knows whatever we want to call it the new system would be let's say it were more expensive because it would have it would be like a switch but just better yeah let's say it were like 350 400 yeah that's yeah. still less than a ps5 very much right less. so and there, an there's still going to be the budget option yeah, yeah. did yeah. you guys hear the theory about um why the switch never got an upgrade hmm. no now look this is as far as i know this theory is not based off of any rumors or anything it's just people guessing Purely speculation yeah but i mean you know there's nothing like that tinfoil hat about it i mm -hmm. think it sounds kind of plausible so, the Switch Lite came out, I think, 2019. Yes. Yeah. You know, and that's your cheaper option for the kids. It's like 200. Uh, it's handheld only, um, which makes sense, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same kind of variations they did with, like, the DS and the 3DS. Yep. You know, like, they this all one's had, cheaper. This they had different expensive. variations. This one has a bigger screen. And then we got the, the OLED Switch, mm -hmm. although that's not that much better in performance not a performance, but... It's uh, all about the display. Yeah, yeah the display is a quality power. screen. But it does... It, the processing power, as far as I know, is exactly the same. It's, it's yeah. the same. It's just literally just a different display. But, you know, you could always make a new version of the Switch with higher processing power without it being, this is the successor to... This is our brand new console, right? Just like PS4 they Pro. Could. Yeah. yeah. The theory goes that they were going to work on it, after the Switch Lite. So this would have been around, like, what, 2020, mm -hmm. 2021. Oops, COVID. Uh, uh, no resources, right? You know, that's where all the, like, PS5 shortage shortages, shortages yeah. came. And, like, yeah, like, the Switch chip shortages with NVIDIA. So the theory goes that, like, because that lasted a whole, probably, like, two, three years. Oh, that impacted, years. like, the industry, you know? Yeah. Um, such that it was harder to get parts. Because, you know, they're not manufactured in-house. The <laughs> pandemic ruined everything. Um that Tell me about Nintendo it. eventually went, this is taking too long, it's going to cost too much money. Let's just wait until we want to make the next system. Mm. And that's why we never got a Switch Pro or a Switch XL. Yeah. Which I can absolutely, like, see, see <laughs> the thing with me is that's plausible. I absolutely believe that that could have been a thing. But then again, we're dealing with Nintendo. Right. <laughs> so who the fuck knows? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like Nintendo's like, it's the man behind the curtain. You never know what's going to happen next. See, but then you also have uh, Xbox's plans for the next uh, 15 years yeah. leaking yeah. on a random, what, what is that like October? I can't remember. Bro, that was crazy. <laughs> yeah, so they, who knows? Uh, 2035. It's like, how do they know this so, this far ahead? <laughs> Fallout 7. Fallout 7. Coming to you, they 2032. Like the, they had, like, the next two Fallout games, the next two Doom games, the next three Elder Scrolls. That's honestly the, insane the, the how far ahead they got that plan. The specs of the new system. That's, re that's it's, upsetting. That is, honestly... That's really upsetting. I, I often think of a of like the just as a, as an aside. I often think of like the the game director's vision for the game, and I often have to think of like when, when that happened. I was like, just to think like down that far, like because that's got to be in the back of your head while you're working on like. Can you imagine? Oh can you imagine getting that? Okay, here's your workload for the next fifteen years. Well, you also have to consider that you know. 
whether you're a business executive or a, a game director, producer, or programmer, you're thinking of the next 10 things you want to work on. Meanwhile, these days, a game takes four to five years to make mm-hmm. if nothing goes wrong. Yeah. So, like... Yeah, if there's no cutbacks or... It's kind of not that weird. And that's, you know, again, those games aren't guaranteed to come out at all or when they're listed to. Can you imagine if they had it down to the day of release? <laughs> oh, don't say that. <laughs> um, with that said... When do you guys think the next Nintendo system is going to be announced? Because everyone's saying it has to be next year because uh, because the, the direct had games I didn't like, I, so they're running out of ideas. I I actually have an idea where it's announced 2024, coming out 2025. I I would have to agree with that. I would say probably either announced late 2024, maybe like in the last direct of the year, like a, like a little teaser coming out probably mid-2025. Yeah, I I definitely think whenever they announce it, it's going to be like the Switch, where it's like six months to a year. Yeah, yeah that's usually um, the norm, I think. If anything, they announced the, the NX, as they called it, early, because the Wii U was flopping. Yeah, when was NX announced? Like, 2015? I think 2015, yeah. yeah. So that was like a year and a half before. Yeah. Then we got the whole reveal. Excuse yeah, me. I remember oh, that. And it's like December 2016. Yeah. And then three months later. Okay, here you go. Man, I remember that. I was in high school. I was in ninth grade when that came out. Here's a new system. Here's all the here's some tune. Good times. Good <laughs> times. Fun. Yep. And we did. Yeah, they were they oh, were yeah. they were quick to get that show. Oh yeah, that the, the switch has been they had massively been. successful. Well, I wonder when development, development of the NX started. <sighs> Maybe Probably like 2013. I'd say like maybe 14. at least 2014. Because the, the Switch is basically... I don't think they ever confirmed this, but just looking at the similarities between the Wii U and the Switch, it seems like the Switch is what they wanted the Wii U to be. I, I think that's a yeah. fair assessment to make. Yeah, it's kind of like how like basically the Wii is kind of just a souped-up GameCube spec-wise, more or less. Yeah. I, I will say that we, we have a Wii U, and... I'm sorry. <laughs> no, we... we we bought one specifically for the purpose of the channel. Yeah, no, it didn't, oh. like, invade our house. Yeah. It's not, like, <laughs> crashing the place. You didn't find it between your couch cushions one day. It's like, oh, how'd that get there? No, and uh, you could tell, at least I, I feel like they were really trying to draw people in with that that game where it was like, here's all of our legacy shit. Because mm-hmm. they just had so much of it on there. And, like, for a while, like, before the... Oh, you mean Virtual Console specifically? Yeah. Right, because Virtual Console had been a thing for the Wii and yeah. the 3DS and the Wii U, and they ended it with the Switch because they realized, okay, we're getting our shit together. We should finally have accounts carry over, yeah. like, what games they buy for the 19th time. But they're also, um, <laughs> the thing that is just amazing with the Wii U is that, like, the games that I've played on it haven't been, like, the worst like, uh, Met- Met- Metroid Prime was the only one where I was kind of playing that, and I was like, Ugh. But that was because of the controls. Mm. Uh, remember, obviously, you remember. Oh, that came out of the Wii. Well, I, I know, but I'm saying, like, just control-wise on there, like, it, it just had such a weird setup. Oh, yeah, I get what you mean, because the Wii and the Wii U, yeah. Yeah, they, they were so focused on their technology that there was just, like... Just focus on the game. Yeah, yeah. It's, it was so confusing. It, yeah, the last of the. Sometimes did. Sometimes it's even. kind of some of the games are kind of clunky to and, control. And that's why games like One Two Switch, like who wants another fucking One Two Switch? Yeah. And so it's like just make good games, and that's that's really what the Switch has, I would say, prioritized over anything. It's like we've had like two two Wario Wars, we've had two uh, two Zeldas, mm-hmm. yep, two and Gens of Pokemon, and uh, New Splatoon. Been, one 3D Mario. Smash Ultimate. Yeah, and it's like, there's all these things, and it's like, how many of these things really thrive on motion controls? Like, Wario, Wario where the, the latest one is the only one I could really... They based, I think right. they kind of ditched motion controls after the Wii. Yeah, really. Which it's, I, it's really yeah, only thing for, it's like, not necessary. Yeah, no. That whole that whole era was based, like, from, like, when the Wii came out until probably, like, around, like, Connect of the 360. That was, like, the whole, motion controls are the yeah. future, man. All, all gaming is going to be like this, and then it never really panned no. out. And you notice it's okay for WarioWare to do it, and no one complains, because... Ever since the GBA, WarioWare's whole thing has been, let's test out what this system can do. Mm-hmm. And the Switch already has motion controls and an IR sensor, so they made a game around it because Get It Together was something else completely different. There was also the uh, Super Mario Party that focused heavily on Switch controls right. in every mini game, And then yeah. it's, it's follow-up that brought back stuff from older games I think didn't have as much of a focus on no, that. No, no, it was, it was far more just like... Right. 
the past gameplay stuff. And the the only other thing I can think of is like Nintendo Switch Sports, which was yeah. that's specifically like we that, want the Wii Sports Wii yeah, that crowd. When I is, saw that, that made me sad. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm I, I I I grew up playing the original Wii Sports. It's always had. Did. I know, but I just it looked kind of fun. And I then wanted I them heard to bring golf was delayed for six months <laughs> and it wasn't in the base game. I wanted them to actually bring. I was hoping when, it, when they announced it, it'd be the actual Mies because <laughs> on the yeah, Switch, the Mies don't do anything. There's no there's oh, nothing, yeah, of course, for there's nothing for them. Yeah, yeah, you can put them in Mario Kart and Smash. <laughs> that's it. That's it. And they're just your little icon. That's it. I wanted them to release it with the Mies, you know, basically just an upgrade version of Wii Sports. It, it, I, it's just sad. Yeah. I, no, I get it. it. And it was just, it was such a weird thing. It but. was odd. I'm sure it's a good game and all, but I, I'm i sorry, I'm a Wii Sports purist. <laughs> <laughs> if, if those exist. I, 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 I think of a few people. Bro, have you seen the speedruns for uh, Wii Sports Golf? They're crazy! They're crazy! They are in- <laughs> <laughs> Madman! Seriously! <laughs> They, they plotted everything. Oh, it's dude, insane. That, that might be my favorite summoning salt video. <laughs> more, more than like Ninja Gaiden, more than Mario 3, no warps. <laughs> nope. the, Wii, the Wii Sports Golf, bro, oh. it goes hard. <laughs> You're messing with the motion parts. Oh my god. Uh, oh, so good. We should look into that after this. <laughs> um, Anything else we want to touch on? Let's get other Nintendo stuff we can just brush out of the way. Uh, Yoshi. <sighs> Yeah, that that's a Yoshi. Yep. Yep. That that sure is a Yoshi. They could definitely make another Yoshi game. Do you think it would be Woolly World focused or That's the thing, is the last two have been Woolly World and Crafted World. And I actually would stop the Arts and Crafts gimmick because like it's okay, cute. We it. I know it, We already have an Arts and Crafts gimmick. And it works kind of fine for Paper Mario. <laughs> yeah, and Kirby's Epic Yarn. Well, okay, Kirby's Epic Yarn. Like the last game. two Yoshi games, they're made by the same company, Good what Deal. Is it, what is it with Nintendo making games about craft supplies? Paper Mario, Wooly World. Because I think they're, art- they're, they're fucking consumer base is just purely children who are learning to draw for the first time. <laughs> I don't know why you're making such big conclusions based off this. What if it's fun? Because <laughs> the past few Yoshi games have just been whatever games. I mean, they've been good. They've been better than the DS Yoshi well, wait, games. Do we, need, do we really need another Wooly World entry? Well, the thing is, for me Okay, is, let's just end Yoshi forever. Well, no, he's not saying end Yoshi. I'm saying if you're going to do something with Yoshi, make it something interesting. Because it's like... I, I don't see any difference between Yoshi with... With uh, what we have already. Like That's true. It's, it's not it's not unique enough. It's the DS, just a different The DS uh, game yeah. is trash, the three DS game is it, it plays it very safe. And the reason people like Woolly World and Crafty World Crafty World Crafty World <laughs> is because <laughs> they're like the original Yoshi's Island. Mm-hmm. It's just it's kind of a return to form yeah. rather than actually doing anything new. Oh, We've Island. never had a three D Yoshi game. Which, which is fun. I thought it would be. That's really weird to think about though. We've never had that. <laughs> With throwing eggs, it's just a third-person shooter. <laughs> Dude, that'd be sick. I want a Yoshi, Ratchet, and Clank. Fuck There's, yeah. <laughs> it's actually kind of funny. I was... I, I wasn't thinking of Yoshi, but... I, I was playing a, a game recently that had, like... Like a character where you can see enemies in the distance that are, like, highlighted. Yeah. And you can, like, automatically shoot. Just do something like that. Throw mm-hmm. an egg, like, automatically, like, with your camera movement, like, where you're aiming. No, it's got to be a first-person game like Metroid Prime. But we already have that. It's called Metroid Prime. No, but it needs Yoshi. to be Yoshi. It needs to be, like, crayon graphics on a wacky dinosaur he's got like tropical an, island. He's got, like, an egg slingshot. Yeah. <laughs> I want to poop eggs in first person. <laughs> this is gaming. Um, no. We're going to keep this a sandwich. Do we want to sort of come yeah, so- roll back to Nintendo after... We talk on other. Yeah, I bits think it's about all? time. Yeah. Okay, so. Like Crash Bandy Boy! <laughs> now, do either of you want to tell everyone exactly what my game interests are? Why don't you, you do that, you lazy piss? <laughs> Even I'm not fully sure. Basically, I'm just more into sort of um, strategy games, uh, simulation stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. Um. And some first-person shooters here and there. You know, I'm very, I'm very boring. Well, there's, I mean, there, <laughs> there's not boring. A, I know it's a, it's my own niche. It's my own yeah. taste. There's, there's I like, a, like a specific umbrella term for your kind of like demographic. Um, 
on the streets, they'd call someone like you a nerd. Thank you. Anyways, so uh, one thing I did want to mention on my list is probably something you two are familiar with. See Skylines 2. I, I have seen it, and I, I've been intrigued by it, but it's like... Give it six more months. You're, you're going to have to explain for the audience who only plays Nintendo baby games why City Skylines 1 why, is why? good and why the sequel is not. Oh, oh my god. Okay, so getting into some background. So What is that stain on your shirt? It's T. I am the slob. And thank you. For oh, I thought that was from Bob Evans. No. Okay. Bob I, Evans I came dribbled, on your shirt. I dribbled some T. Ryan? Yeah. <laughs> There's not much. He's an old man, so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who drew? <laughs> Don't make that face when I'm drinking. Around you two, I I'm always gonna, feel old. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Back on topic. So, <laughs> fucking pension. <laughs> Don't forget to get your social security checked. Every time I hang out with Ryan, I want to go into retirement. <laughs> so, some background for Scott. That was him! That was him, not me! My hands are up! I'm right here! That wasn't me! That Grandpa. was him! Grandpa! You forgot your medicine, okay? Puppy. Calm down! Puppy. Calm. Calm. I'm not a puppy! Take your medicine! <laughs> I'm a human boss! I don't know, given the way you were staring at that waitress earlier today. Oh! <laughs> So after SimCity 2013, which was very below par for a city builder, Skylines came out, and it was everything SimCity was supposed to be. Don't give me that look, Drew. <laughs> it was everything that SimCity was supposed to be and more. You had way more control over how to build your city, way more freedom. The maps were bigger. It was just mwah, chef's kiss. It was a 10 out of 10 beautiful game. Came out in 2015 and has... Pretty much gotten constant support up until pretty much this year, earlier this year, when they announced Skylines 3, mm -hmm. 2, sorry. And Drew was with me when I saw the announcement trailer. We were at work, I remember it fondly. I was eating lunch, she was sitting next to me. I saw it come up, and I was like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> and Drew said something of the effect of, Will has achieved gaming sex sexual maturity. That was the moment I I figured out I could produce semen. You only ever get your you only ever get one Meta Knight and Smash. <laughs> I mean I, I, I'm I'm a diehard. Uh... No, you don't know what I'm laughing about. You really don't. I don't. But whatever. I'm a diehard Skylines fan. I still play it. I have racked up over 500 hours on it. So okay. it's a very good game. It does have its problems, of course, but you know okay. all, every game's do. Yeah. Skylines Camp comes out, it's announced that it's going to be the most realistic city builder. It's going to be huge maps, very detailed, comes out, and is virtually unplayable. Yeah, the hardware requirements were so stacked, and it was like, there were a bunch of little graphical hiccups and bugs. I played it for like half an hour, I'm like, this, this, this isn't hit. This just doesn't feel right. So is, it, like, is it okay mechanically, or is it shoddy there? No, nah, <sighs> Mechanically, it's it's okay. I I they've definitely made some improvements and some quality of life improvements over the past game. Different tools and there's definitely a lot more freedom and tools for design at your exposure. But there's also some stuff that they've changed that I'm not too big of a fan. Like the city service buildings, like you know, they were pretty small in the mm -hmm. base game, but they, scaling wise, they looked big. You get like a high school, it's the size of fucking Lake Superior. <laughs> <laughs> and oh God. it's like you have, <laughs> no, I can't make the joke. I can't make the joke. What no. is it? <laughs> well, it has to be like a maze, so the shooter gets lost. <laughs> Excuse me. We're anyways, sold in seven different. <laughs> anyways, well, you it, for listen, one reason listen. and me for another. It's yeah. his turn. It's a, it's, it's a finished game. What's else, he gonna say? What's he gonna say? <laughs> It's a it's Columbine, Columbine. <laughs> we already made the Anne Frank joke. I think I'm already on the list. We did that within the first fucking five minutes. Welcome to Moonfriend. We're the only restriction. <laughs> wait, wait, what do you have against Anne Frank? No, you made the. What was what, it? What do you have against Anne Frank? No, after you said you made the Anne Frank joke, and I said yeah. I said she was going to be a guest on the show. I thought you said like well, I was her. Just hang out and talk. And then I said, yeah, that summer camp wasn't what I expected it to be. 
Bro, she did something that no one else in history has done. She died. died. <laughs> <laughs> so, back to these guidelines, too. So, yeah, um, yeah, there's just some game design aspects I don't quite vibe with at yeah. the moment. Like I said, I'm going to let it cook for another like half year or even a year before I come back to it. They have made some improvements. There's been okay. updates recently, so I still have hope. There have been there have been games such as No Man's Sky where yeah, just, like, games it's, that have just started just so poorly. Yeah, it's like they promised a lot, but they just didn't deliver. No Man's Sky especially was like that. But, but hey, so, No Man's Sky, you know, that got improved over time. It did, yeah. And you, now it's you actually, play it now and it's a completely yeah, different it's, game. Yeah, it's insane. It's really cool, too. Like, um, my friend played it's from launch, Cyberpunk. and he plays it now, and he says it's two different games. So yeah. so I have faith in my heart for Skylines 2. I want to see probably, there's definitely going to be more support. And I, they already have a roadmap list, so they're going to have DLCs coming out okay. and stuff like that. Nice. Me being the little fucking beta simp male that I am, <laughs> bought, of course, the deluxe edition with all the shit included. So well, hey, you, you're right it happens sure. to the best of us. I know. It's, not the, it's not the first time I bought Anno like that. It's fine. But... Anno was at least a good game. Anno is like a like a space colony in the future, right? Um, it depends on which game. So, okay. but do they all take place in the future? Not all, all of them. No, the most recent one is Anno eighteen hundred, which is a historical one. Oh, okay. complete fluke too. He mentioned twenty two oh five out of the blue, like he just pulled that number out of his the, ass. That's the only one I've heard of, and that's an actual game. Yeah, that's the one where you can build cities on the moon and fight moon terrorists. Cool. Yeah, they're all the moon terrorists are on Earth though, so it doesn't really hit as hard, and it's only in boats. <laughs> it's weird. Anyways, way. but yeah, that's another one I want to mention. Anno. So it's a, it's basically um, you take skylines, you take the city aspect of it, and you pretty much add in resource management. You have to have make um, a lot of resources to keep your population happy, yeah. well fed, and all that stuff, and you make money off their taxes. It's this whole economy sim simulator, yeah. basically. Gotcha. Past two entries have been 2205, which is in the future, and 1800, the most recent one, which is my favorite in the past, like 18, 18, like 19th century. Very cool. Um, I don't think there's going to be a new one, per se, released, because 2205 came out in like 2015, 1800 was 2018, 19, around there, so... It's been a decent time. It's been a decent time, but I think we maybe get might, might get a trailer or a teaser. There's only okay. so many eras they hit and a weird thing with anno games is that the year the number in their years <coughs> has to equal nine the cumulative number of the like you know two, two plus two plus zero plus five nine eighteen hundred gotcha. nine that sort of oh. thing it's this weird thing that they've always had so like the what was the one that i thought they were going to do anno 1305 <laughs> so way in the back because they did okay. 1404 but i don't know they've been continually supporting 1800 for quite a few years, so I'm probably going to see more of that, but I'd like to at least hint at the next game. They've already kind of hinted at it already, with the okay. little, little game Maybe you'll and get stuff. like a teaser, or like an announcement exactly, or something, yeah. so. I think that would be interesting to see, like a, just okay. a, a teaser for the next entry, probably mid to late next year. Okay. So, what else did I have? Has your friend ever talked about a game for so long, so boringly, that you'd rather talk about race relations? God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, I'm getting the axe. No. <laughs> Only sure. one can wield Mjolnir. Wait, that's a hammer. Yeah, that's oh. Stormbreaker. That's right you there. You don't break the storm in your fucking chest if you don't shut the fuck up. <laughs> well, there's always a storm in my Would chest. you rather me talk about my tactical World War II shooter games? Well, did you what, did you want to? If you guys would let me. I'm, yeah, I'm waiting. You're, you're here. You're, you're the new party member. <laughs> Um, You're not a guest star. You're like on Will the channel now. Sheldon joins the battle. Mm -hmm, literally, and I've seen it, and I have. We already have Mr. Krabs. I have. I have severe PTSD because of it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and speaking of PTSD, postscriptum. <laughs> World War II tactical game, one of my favorite games that's ever released. Wait, the, so this is nerd and race relations. If you play as a Nazi, yeah, yeah, it's 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 worn out. It's <laughs> welcome, yeah. He's grabbing the axe. He has the axe. I don't even think you did that the first time. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to get very uncomfortable. Is that thing heavy? Yeah. Okay, Drew. No, listen, I disappointed myself with that anyway. Yeah, so... Like... so, so just shut the fuck up. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> so, 
the whole basis of Postscriptum is it's a very immersive, in-depth World War II game. You know how in, like, COD and Battlefield you have your... <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Just, just doing this for now. And COD and Battlefield, you have, like, your hubs. It's very fast-paced, sh- shooting ups and stuff like that. Post is very slow-based. It's very realistic. You have okay. Stanima. Um, it's, the weapons feel much different. It, there's actually, like, you know, aiming and... It's, it's a whole other thing. Yeah. Very realistic. It is also fucking traumatizing. I bet. I've seen men torn in two. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that detailed? Yeah, the gore. Literally, like, if you play as, like, um... Wouldn't be real simulator if it wasn't. If you play... I, I've been in a tank crew multiple times as the gunner. I've seen men literally turn into red mist. Oh. I'm not kidding. <laughs> it's bad. You'll be like, where'd Johnny go? And, you'll, and his partner will be like, over there, over there, and up there. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, body parts get blown off. I've seen heads fly off from 50 so, cal So impacts. is it literally just like a... I, I haven't... Lo and behold, I haven't played a shooter game in f- fucking forever. Is it literally just like what I'm thinking of where it's like Halo-style like stuff where it's like, okay... We're going to do... It's not like a campaign, but it's, um, like, always multiplayer. Oh, no. it's, always. it's always online multiplayer. Okay. Yeah, there's no single player. There's no campaign. It's just an always okay. online multiplayer thing. Okay. It's been a while since I played any sort of, yeah. like, multiplayer it's, shooting. It's, it's very, it is very immersive, too. And, like I said, it's very gory. Um, if you guys are willing, I'll show you gameplay later. It's not, like, bad, bad, but it's, like... For a, for a shooting game, it definitely is... I just want to see it. Just, like, a trailer or something. I'll show you. It's definitely out there. I might watch it and stream it. That sounds actually really cool. Sounds interesting. I've never heard of Postscriptum until now. I'll show you guys uh, stuff later, but it's... Postscriptum? Postscriptum. Post-scriptum. It, it's, it's a weird name, but it's still a very good game. Now... It's been dead for a while, unfortunately, but it's recently come back because, for whatever reason... The, de- the entire dev team was fired from the studio. From Jeez. Yeah, like, literally, the entire team. Why? No one knows. Literally, like, the boss just said, okay, all of you guys are fired, and I quit. And, <laughs> yeah, and the player base was like, what the fuck? So, there's been almost no support, and, like, the servers have been dead for a while, until probably, like, only, like, a few months ago. Well, oh. that's, especially in, like, the last five years, unfortunately, that's not a very surprising or weird I thing. I know. But a new team has it, and there, there's a whole roadmap posted, so I'm very excited to see how the support comes out. They already have new campaigns and maps to add and stuff like that, new factions. Does this game, does this game has any, have any level of, like, DLC type stuff, or... Not necessarily. It's just so constant updates. Okay. Yeah, okay. like like over the years. Like you start off when it first came out, it was only like one campaign where you only were like in Holland. You fought in Holland and Market Garden. Then you released. Then they released. Um, I think it was. Then you fought in France. There's different eras too. Yeah. It's it's a bit complicated, but it's still a very very good game. I consider it to be the <clears throat> best World War Two related shooting game ever made. Okay. Does second place even come close? <clears throat> Second place would be probably Hell at Loose, which is actually on my list. Another very good game. It's similar to Post in how it's very much tactically and immersively oriented, but it's also kind of fallen into decline lately because the studio that led the development of it was recently bought out and the rights were sold to basically a mobile game developer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you can see the the, the effect. My, of, microtransactions coming yeah, soon. Uh, well, they, they they've always been there. Oh, okay. It's all cosmetic though. Nothing, oh, of course. Yeah. Okay. So it's not too bad. But um, like they they released a trailer that looked god awful. Seriously, uh, it's literally like a mobile game trailer, uh, especially for something that was that immersive. I'll have to show you guys because it's 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 funny. So bad. It's funny to watch, literally. Okay. And um. It's been on a, kind of on a slow downward spiral. Um, Should I do it? Yes. Yep. Downward spiral, downward spiral, downward spiral, downward spiral. Can you put the music again? Yeah, I'll put it. You said, yeah. the, you said the thing. You did. <laughs> you said the thing. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, <laughs> is, that, is that seriously comfortable? It's more comfortable than you think. Yeah. I mean, I guess it doesn't look uncomfortable. The wood so, part is very soft. Okay. Now, of the two games, I much prefer Post. Hell at Loose is fun in its own right, but there's still some innate gameplay mechanics I don't necessarily agree with, and a bunch of other little stuff. Okay. The gore is still there. 
<laughs> you know, but I'd much prefer posts. So hopefully Hell at Loose does continue to get a bit better, but I don't really see that coming. Who knows, but much else. what are your predictions for the next year for it? Just more updates. Yeah, more updates, probably different changes in how the studio handles it. You know, I've not really been too into it. You know, Post has been in the spotlight recently with all the news because it was like, oh, my God, dead game back. Right. <laughs> like, you know, seriously. Yeah. And like all my boys I play with online and on Discord, we're all like, oh, yeah, let's go. We've been playing that almost nonstop. So that's been know. taking more of the attention. We've kind of let go of Hell at Loose for the time being. I don't know what's going to happen to it, but. Okay. It's still an okay game, but, you know, it's not like... Whatever happens, happens. Yeah, exactly. It's not okay. like Beyond the Wire where it's literally dead now. <laughs> literally, no one plays that game anymore. What's your... Uh, what are the rest of yours, or did you have any more? That was... Um, I mean, that's kind of it. <clears throat> Excuse okay. me. Okay. Um, yeah, Rise of Indie Games. Yeah, that's kind of about it. And I'll, any, any, I mean, any questions for you guys about my specific gaming niches or just the games I've mentioned? No, no questions that I can think of, but I do think that that is, since they have been brought to my light, I'm a bit more interested. I, so. I think while we were eating at the restaurant, you mentioned you predict Civ 7? Yes, that's right. I do yes, think Civ. Right. There's been a lot of news articles talking about, oh, you know, Civ 7 should do this, or take this from 6, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I do think, that I think it has been confirmed that a new game excuse me, is in the works, I don't exactly know how far. I mean, that's not wise. super surprising, though. Yeah, it feels like one of those things where like you wait long enough and it's gonna happen. Yeah, exactly. especially with those types of games. Yeah, Civ is always like you know there are always three things guaranteed in life: death, taxes, and civilization. Civ <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Simier> civilization. <laughs> the um, so I would say probably a maybe a teaser trailer release within the next year, and probably maybe even a full release either late next year or early 2025. Okay. Yeah. So, it all again, it all depends on development stuff, you know. There was a decent gap between um, 5 and 6. I think 5 came out in, like, 2010, 2011. Okay. 6 didn't come out until, I want to say, like, 2015, 16. Okay, about, so that's, that's, yeah, yeah, that's been around there. So, time. we're getting to that point where we're yeah. kind of due for a new one. So, hopefully, hopefully I'd like to see it. I like the new art style they picked. It's kind of a... The past games have aimed for more of a realistic art style, especially like for the character models and the cutscenes. Yeah. Six is a bit more cartoonish, and I yeah, kind of like I saw, it. I, I kind of like yeah. it. I vibe with it, and I hope I, I don't know if they're going to continue down that path, but I think it'd be nice if they did. I want to see more diverse world leaders, especially like for the USA, because it's always been like presidents. There's yeah. only been I think it's only been George Washington, Abe Lincoln, and Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> I want to see fucking Calvin Coolidge. I want to see that one president who. Stupidly did a speech in the rain and then died a month later. Huh? Which one? What was the one that did a speech in the rain and got sick and died a month later? Oh, William Henry Harrison. That was it. I thought it was Candace. <laughs> Imagine you go to this... <laughs> We're not doing I'm, that. I'm really just... I'm disappointed in myself. Yeah, I'm, come up with something better, dumbass. I really should. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. It's okay. You, you just see Henry's cutscene. It's, he's just, like, terminally ill. He's coughing. <laughs> and when like you defeat him, he's just dead. <laughs> like he's just dead. Oh it is weird how they're the um, the the leaders are basically immortal because you start from the dawn of civilization to like the future. Yeah, and they're just immortal. <laughs> it's weird how that works, but it's like our god king Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> the way you two were talking about him this morning, he might as well. Yo, I, seriously, dude. He, if you ever have a chance to read up on him, yeah, because he he is like the American badass embodiment, literally. Like, if, if American... If you ever want to know why people are so, like, oh, America's badass, he's the reason why. Yeah, literally. <laughs> he was he was the goat. He honestly was the goat. I thought he was the bear. And the bear. He was that, too? He, he was a... He, he killed both and ate them. Which he probably would. Oh. Okay, that's kind of upsetting. He was a game hunter. <laughs> he, was, he was America's first gamer. His first hardcore gamer. He did a lot of firsts. He was the first to ride in a car, fly in an airplane. Um, first to fuck pussy. He had a big family. Ha! Okay, he I did. I, he had like anywhere. seven. He had like seven kids. I'm not even shitting you. Got shot, lived. Yeah, to tell the tale, yeah. he gave the speech anyways. Yeah, didn't he get shot through his speech? 
Yeah, it, it went. The bullet went through his eyeglass case, his speech, and then finally into his um, body. Yeah, and nearly just, grazed his lung. Then he had it removed, and then did the speech. No, he did, he literally he staggered back. They found the guy. He they brought the assassin. They sent him away, and then he gave the fucking speech. Because he's that bad. <laughs> and then he went to the hospital. Seriously. A little history. I'm wet thinking about it. Seriously, that is so manly. <laughs> Is this our first, like, sexual awakening <laughs> live on stream? Oh, Drew, it happened long ago. You're just now experiencing it. Okay, before this becomes a history podcast... What? As much as I would like for it Wait, to no, be... what did he say? Drew, shut up. So, what's your next thing? Well, uh, I was going to say, do you want to do your third parties next, or do you want me to go before you? I don't really have much for third party. I, I mean, like, I, I really just have, like, just two indie games in mind. And that's not really much. That's not saying much. So uh, we all we know. have to talk about the love of my life again. So so, so hold on. Just, just to preface this, that waiter. No, no. This is a different. Uh, this is let it die. this is the this is the video game love of his life. Which is, have you ever played Hollow Knight? No. I I actually would say it's a recommended play because a it's I think it's. Pretty cheap. So. It's fifteen dollars so, and all yeah. the updates that triple the size of the game. It's actually, free. it's actually like. Is it your icon Discord icon from yeah. that game? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's a yes. really good game, and I I even got into it. I only ever did one full playthrough, but one is really all you need. Uh, there's a character in it named Hornet. Mm-hmm. and she's getting her own. It's not a spinoff game. It's no, it's a full. Five it's a full game, game. and. Uh, it got teased, like, back in what, like... Well, so how it went was... Remember, Hollow Knight was a Kickstarter game, yes. right? It was crowdfunded. And one of the goals that was reached was Hollow Knight's going to get her own little, like, side story. Yeah. But their ideas... They, they had so much planned for it eventually that they eventually said, okay, so we're going to keep giving you more content for, like, all the other stretch goals you reached. But later on... We're just going to make our own game with Hornet. Yes. And that was shown off Valentine's Day of 2019. Calm down. Now, I get it. The dev team is like literally five people. Yeah, Team Cherry. You know, like, I get it. If a triple A game takes five or six years at this point, and that's the norm, the fact that we're probably even going to get Silk Song in the next year or two is astounding it really is but which it was interesting because i had never actually watched the the demo gameplay footage before yeah there's actually a few and i saw it for the first time and i was really really impressed oh right the demo specifically yeah. yes uh and that game i would love to that's crazy because that demo was in 2019 as yes. well Wow. E3 2019. And it still looked good. Like, it was, yeah. like, very, very nice and well-rendered and everything. And so, who knows if it's changed at that point. But I, I would recommend watching it and seeing what you think. But um, I'll have to give it a look into. I don't know if you've ever played a Metroidvania. I have not. Are you using many platformers? No, not ones? really. Just some Mario ones. That's about it. Yeah. Because I'm a basic bitch <laughs> like that. No, well, that's all right. Hey, the, we only some of these Metro- Nintendo games. It's fine. <laughs> some of those Metroidvanias are really like I'm. A, I'm particularly like a, a 3D platformer type person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Hollow Knight probably is among some of the best that I've played as far as 2D platformers. Really? Yeah, Metroidvanias <laughs> especially. I feel like it does so much right for the Metroidvania genre. Like I've even played like stuff like Metroid Dread, and while I like Metroid Dread for its atmosphere and everything, I don't know if I'd put it on the same pedestal as. Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight, just yeah. just to be clear, Metroidvania is Metroid and Castlevania, right? Yes. Okay. Style gameplay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it it refers to not the original Castlevanias, which were just linear levels, but um, Metroid, which was always like you go to this part of the map, get this item, and it unlocks this many more areas. Mm-hmm. It's non linear progression, and... right? So <laughs> Castlevania started that with Symphony of the Night, which is. Our at this point, arguably the most famous game in that franchise. Mm-hmm. And then from there, Castlevania was all that style of gameplay on like GBA and DS and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so that kind of, yeah, that's, I guess the genre of platformers is regarded as Metroidvania. Yeah, games. where okay. it's, there's a huge map and your progression is not necessarily straight path. So it's a non layer progression you're, platform. You're getting items and abilities but that let you do more things. For reference, uh, you've heard of Shovel Knight? 
Yes. Shovel Knight is not a Metroidvania. Yes. And the way you go through the world is very like, okay, there's this mission, there's this mission, there's this. It's clearly like, okay, it's linear. this way. Yeah. Right, and they're all, the levels are all separate. In a Metroidvania, it's all one interconnected map. Okay. And usually areas like kind of have multiple entrances and X points that yeah, you know, like if you want to get sections. to like let's say like there's red area, green area, yellow area, you can only get to it from like a certain part of the map. Mm-hmm. Right, from but there maybe there. once you unlock other abilities, you'll find a different exit. And there's oh, different... it loops back here. That's crazy. So there's different pathways to it. Eventually, yeah. as you work, you progress your way on. Okay, I see. Uh, okay. What I'm trying to say is, Metroidvanias are maybe the best kind of platform that we've ever made. <laughs> I, 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 and I it's sim- not even close. I simply prefer 3D just because I think there's a lot you can do with 3D space. A Hat in Time is, I think, one of my favorite games of all time. Yeah. And it's just, um, but, but yeah, that I certainly can't sneeze in the direction of Hollow Knight. Mm. Cause it's, it's just that like when I played it, I, cause I like story a lot too. That game is very, very good with its story and making you interested. Yeah. It's very dark souls where like characters talk yes. in flowery English and, oh, I see. um, you know, you're not quite sure what these specific terms mean, but, you know, your exploration sometimes rewards you with insight into the story and what they're talking about. Yes. Mm. And they explain just enough that it leaves all the YouTubers to put together theories and then two years later the developers confirm it on the Reddit AMA. <laughs> it's it's the style of the time. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> um what a time to be alive. But yeah, I, I would love for there to be any silk song news, as you as you would obviously. Friendly reminder, because this is something I have to remind myself too. That half the reason I'm excited for Silk Song, besides just another game from this developer that hit the ball out of the park on their first game, mm. is Hollow Knight Combat. I wouldn't describe as slow necessarily. It's no. like a moderate pace. And mm-hmm. if you've never seen Hollow Knight, there's a focus on aerial combat. So like when you strike an enemy in midair, um. There are actions that you can only do like once in midair, but once you hit an enemy, you can do those attacks again. So you you, you receive a certain amount of blowback. So like oh, yeah, there, there are hard modes in the game in which there are spikes covering the floor, and you have to continuously, rapidly, and perf- perfectly hit downward to bounce off the spikes right. to keep getting more aerials. And also, in general, hitting enemies uh, refills your magic meter which allows you to either heal or cast projectile attacks mm. or super strong attacks. So you have to choose you have to really think when to heal and when to attack. Everything. It's very Dark Souls inspired. It doesn't really play anything like it controls wise, but the fundamental principles of when do I heal? When do I attack? It's still when do I dodge? still very much it's the same there. there. Okay. Health bars, do they? They do, but they're not shown. Okay. Well, I mean like, Oh know, yeah, I see what you they're mean. They're not shown. No, you just hit them until they're dead. But the, the, thing that makes Silk Song look so exciting is, while Hollow Knight isn't slow, um, you look at footage of Silk Song and Hornet runs and climbs faster and she attacks faster and she has much more complex attacks where she attacks from different angles. There's a whole new like sub item weapon system. Yes. The, uh, so the... it, it looks like Hollow Knight's equivalent of Bloodborne where mm. everything's turned up to 11 and you have to be much more um, reflexive. Yeah, it's it's a very like with, with with Hollow Knight, it's very like kind of stereotypical of like okay, you you're on the ground, you have to hit, you know, yeah, block, defend, and you all have that a stuff. Dash. But um, with Silk Song, it seems like there's just a lot more to the combat. So. Oh yeah. So that that what I'd say, I would say that's the biggest like indie thing I could possibly mention. I I at the very least would like possibly another trailer. I don't know, but. I'm at the point, honestly, where like we already have three trailers and the demo. At this point, I just want them to like one more obligatory trailer, and then okay, game comes out in a week. Two yeah. years later. With that said, I don't even think it's guaranteed that it comes out next year. But it sounds like from their Discord. That the I'm game is it it's wrapping up. I'm going to predict that it is, and I'm going to predict it's maybe a late 2024 game. Because if anything, I think that would be a good time. Yeah, um, it could come. I, 2025 is the absolute latest because like there's only so much content they can add. They have to get to a point, and I think they are at the point 
where they're not developing more content. Now they're tweaking things, bug fixing, play testing, translating different languages. Getting ready for that full you know, release. Maybe tuning yeah. the sound design. Yeah. Kind of like polishing it up. Right, right. So, yeah. The, the only other thing I was going to say was I don't know. Is it planned when like Delta Rune makes anything, or is he still working on that? Toby oh, Fox? Uh, so Toby, like two years ago, I think, started doing like quarterly emails. Um, he does like a, a newsletter now that everyone gets emailed, and the very last one, which came out in the fall, uh, brought very good news. For the uninformed, Delta Rune Chapter One came out Halloween 2018. And I think from Jump, as far as we know for now, this could always change, but it seems like there's going to be seven chapters. Okay. Chapter two came out three years later, and these, you know, they're chunky chapters. If you want to do everything in them, there's like five plus hours. They're pretty they're, much they're full beefy, games. very full of story, lots of secrets to find, a lot of depth. Hmm. So, you know, that's fine. But um, then he said, okay. We're going to start doing the paid model release because we can't keep doing this free forever. Yeah. Right. But three, four, and five are all going to come out at the same time. And we just kept waiting and waiting and waiting <laughs> because think about it, one chapter takes roughly three years if everything goes right. Wow. And they're making seven? Seven. And they're going to release three at the same time when we haven't even seen what chapter three is going to look like yet. Yeah. But last newsletter uh, in the fall, Toby said, okay. Chapter three is almost done, but like, screw this. It's just going to be three and four, and you know, development of four is already kind of partial. Yeah. So like, probably another year or two. Okay. But five will release. I don't know on its own necessarily, but not with three and four. Okay. So that's a lot to put all in one. Yeah, yeah, on such a small dev team, nonetheless, too. Right. Especially when you're um, when you kind of think of it in the wake of everything. It's like, okay, you got one and two. Two for five, six and seven. It's right. like, yeah. like <laughs> why, why, why shove three to, all together? Anyone yeah. who's played Undertale or Deltarune knows that um, the attention to detail with the oh, writing yeah. and like just obscure character interactions is crazy. Like characters will have dialogue if you backtrack all the way to the beginning yes. <laughs> about the most esoteric things. Like if you got this one consumable item and you haven't used it yet, and you killed these two bosses but not this one, <laughs> there's. Brand new dialogue for so many weird niche cases. <laughs> um, and now we're making a game that's releasing in chapters rather than one full thing. So you have to pay extra close attention to that. Plus, it's a mystery that's building over time. Oh, geez. So just with writing alone, there's a lot to consider. Um, with that said, Toby, thank you for not being quite as much of a hack fraud as usual. <laughs> Um, I hope he's not a listener. Oh, wait, oh, wait, even if he uh, is, he knows people jump down his fucking throat. It's fine. He's still he's still a, a good doggy. His avatar is a dog. Not Listen, like I'm about to say, and you it's, don't like being like referred to as a dog. You're going to refer to, his, gonna refer to his, other people as a dog. His literal symbol of troll in the game is a dog. Yeah, his character is called Annoying Dog. Annoying Dog, and it's an omnipotent, omniscient god creature yes. that uh. Erases your inventory. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um, there's two other. It even has an earworm song. <sighs> Multiple. Well, yeah. that's that's just all so of his games. The little <laughs> cherry on top of that <laughs> shit cake. Yep. Uh, there's two other franchises I want to talk about. One for a little bit, and one for almost some time at all. Persona. Okay. Listen, it's I complain about Persona Five getting spinoffs and spinoffs and spinoffs rather than just. Persona 6 with yep. like a new setting and new characters. They did this with Persona 4 as well because Persona 4 was a bigger hit than 3 and then it got, you know, a dancing spin off and a fighting game spin off. I think that was it though, besides like, you know, the anime manga adaptations yeah. for like game spin offs. I think it was just those two. Mm. With that said, Persona 4 got its own fighting game. Persona characters have been in Blaze Blue, a couple of their games. We've had what we've had like three or four persona 5 spinoffs yeah. no fighting game where the fuck is persona 5 arena yeah that's actually a good point we because we've had what uh dancing all night we've had the the tactics game that just came out and we've had the strikers game isn't there that new persona 5 like spinoff game that's the tactics one no no no, no. i i spin off oh the mobile game the one with the girl 
Yes, the mobile game. Yeah. Yes. So they might be working on that. Who knows? I'm not sure. That one's being developed by a, a, a Chinese company that regularly develops oh, okay. that same kind of okay. mobile game that's not in-house. Um, but the Persona 5 Arena... If, if they announce Persona 6, I'm actually going to be upset because it means we won't get Persona 5 Arena. Now, for my fellow Persona 5 chads, I hope we all agree that Sojiro has to be a character. I don't care that he's not part of the party. I want my cafe barista as a character. I want him throwing coffee and china <laughs> all over the place and curry. It's going to be great. He's a 50-year-old man. He's a hot alpha and I, what's his name? Sojiro. S O J I R O. I'm going to look him up. The main character stays of, above a, a coffee shop, and that's like his legal guardian. And uh, he's he's kind of based. Of course, he has a fedora. But he does wear a fedora at times. Since you, you've played T5 Fashionable. as well, are there any other non playable characters you'd want to see? In a fighting game? In, in P5 Arena. Because, like, you know, all the Phantom Thieves, probably including uh, Kasumi and... Sai and, and Ichima. Oh, yeah, Sai, yeah. Um, pr- you know, Akechi would have to be there. Oh, that's, sure. that's a guarantee. Yeah. Yeah. But I think Sajiro would be a fun, um, non-playable character to throw in. Other confidants, I'm not too sure. Like, maybe Takemi. She could probably play, like, um, like Valentine? Maybe. From Skullgirls, right? You know, the Probably, whole nurse yeah. motif. I mean, you can, you can theoretically, you can make anything work. Right, because those games are wacky anyway. But, I'm th- like, other characters specifically, like, I wouldn't make, like, the fortune teller a fighter. I wouldn't make Kawakami a fighter. I'm trying to think. I feel like it's... Uh, Sajiro and Tei... Uh, Takemi what's are the, the only two I can think of. What's the blue-haired of. loser guy? The moon confidant. Fuck. Yeah, what is I can't his remember name? his name. Well, no one likes him, so. <laughs> no, but that's why he would be a character. He'd be a joke character. Oh, he's like, like he's like Dan. Loser. Oh, okay. There's the kid at the arcade who plays like the light gun games. He just has a gun. Yeah, he just has like a <laughs> gun. Um, I guess that's about it. Okay. Oh, um. Okay. Spoilers for P5R. Uh, Maruki? Could be. Could be. You could do Kasumi as well. Definitely. Well, right, because Kasumi's already... She's already got a persona and stuff, but Maruki... I mean, he's got a final boss. He has a persona. Yeah, so he yeah. can. He can definitely do it. You don't actually fight him. You just talk to him about your feelings. And it turns into a visual novel. A little fight. <laughs> Bro, Evo's gonna go crazy this year! <laughs> <laughs> Any other things? Um, uh, Sonic. There's actually a couple things to talk about Sonic. Sonic's been getting a lot of stuff in the last couple years. I, I had in my notes a Sonic movie. Yeah, Sonic 3. Sonic that's 3 probably movie. the biggest thing to talk about. Do we want to discuss that? With that said, I have nothing to talk about about the Sonic 3 film. I can't wait for Gerald Robotnik to scare kids into nightmares. Do you think he's even going to be a part of the movie? He has to be, goddammit. He has to be because he technically created Shadow. That is a good point. But do they make him litter? Well, they might they just make him a different him... name. Slash, they might not make him as scary. I want it too. I want it too. I just want the lack of music and him for him for him to deliver his speech. And the still image and the staticky screen. All of you is ungrateful there... humans who took everything away from me. Now, I to feel my loss game. and despair. Forgive me, but I haven't seen... Is that what he says when he climaxes in his loving girlfriend? That was his last word. No, that too. Forgive me, but I've not seen either movies you're it's okay you're arguably not but, missing much but uh, i figured i was they're the but best alvin and the it, chipmunks movies you've ever seen isn't there a, don't get me started on that isn't there a joke where it's like the whatever the government agents are talking and they're i think dr robotnik's there and they mention it was like uh, hopefully this doesn't turn into another azerbaijanistan and one guy says that's not a real country and the other guy says thanks to dr robotnik it isn't <laughs> I don't remember. That sounds like it would. I, I don't know if that it sounds familiar. I don't know if that scene plays out exactly, but I remember someone talking about it like that. Huh. Right, because there's a war going on in that country that doesn't exist anymore, and then it gets crashed by the wedding, right? And then 
This isn't funny. The Let's movie's not on. funny. Can I have the funny. axe, please? No, no, no. Let him fix it. There's something to fix. I just abandoned it. Get back on the topic. Yourself. Um, okay, can you calm down with that? <laughs> can you? He's usually he, I he's literally he, it's like a threat. No, you are you are literally derailing the every five minutes. I'm sorry. Look, it's just the way my brain he, works. He hasn't I, derailed. I Ryan, he's about, in the valley, okay? He is derailed, is in the valley as a smoldering I genu- wreck. I genuinely Para rescue is I'm, coming in right now. I'm legitimately sorry if it bothers you, but I just I have like I don't know if I have like ADHD it's or something. It's fine. It's fine. Just but if you think of me as squirrel brained, I am squirrel brained. I have ten thoughts in my head at all times, <laughs> and they all want to. I want to get out. I want to get out. It's fine, but don't don't ever yell at me for getting thoughts out there quickly because otherwise I'm gonna just be like. Well, I don't. It's Frozen. I don't like you. And Tangled's a better movie, by it's the way. It's just the sound of ale. Tangled is better than Frozen. I, <laughs> Let's la- Okay, listen. So, the Sonic movie 3. It is happening. I didn't even think about it. It's happening again. Um, is there. It's coming out in November, is it? Or December? Mm-hmm. Oh, is there a release date? Sonic 3? I think a release month. I thought it was just like a teaser or something. I didn't realize no, it was. No, it was actually, a poster. Hold it on. is a teaser, but it's got the. What do they call it? It has the expected uh, release date. Board. Oh, okay. There's a name for it. <laughs> I don't remember anything. Right, when you made that face earlier, I just heard the AOL dial-up to just playing. I could hear that in your head. That's what was happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's his default state. That's like that's the login screen. We are sorry. Your your call cannot be connected as dialed. Please try again later. Why can't I find the image now? Sound like on. Eve from 2070. I she can't was. find it. What the fuck? Christmas Eve? No, Eve. She's a character. No, this is the 24th. No, Eve, as in like Adam and Eve from. Wally. Anno. No, never mind. Germany it's an Anno Germany. thing. There's an AI in 2070. That's like your personal assistant. Her name is Eve. She is very helpful. And 2205, it's Adam. Adam and Eve. Okay. Adam's useless in 2205. December 20th, 2024. Okay. So literally in like a year, basically. Yeah. Wow. That should be one hell of a Christmas season. Oh, excuse me. And of course, a lot of people are already... Oh, yeah, so too exciting. (laughs) (laughs) And of course, a lot of people are uh, speculating okay. multiple characters. Any, what else we got? Uh, there's other Sonic stuff I want to talk about because the Knuckles show is about to uh, show up on Netflix, I think. Okay. And they said it's going to be six episodes, which sounds small until you realize that the the CGI in the show is going to go crazy for the main character alone. Yeah. But it sounds like they also want to put each episode, you know, for an episodic show. On the scale of the movies, you know, that much special effects. It's not just going to be Knuckles bumming around in yeah. an American house. Yeah. You know, it's not going to be like a plain sitcom. I so would still play that. Six I'll episodes that. is fair. How long they're going to be, I don't know. But um, I'm I'm more interested in the Knuckles movie, to be honest, than Sonic 3. Like, I guess... I think it's just because I, I love Sonic Adventure 2. Yeah. No, I do too. I, there's a lot I like about Sonic Adventure 2. That's what it's I grew also, up on. That game has such a weird weird story and now we have to adapt it to uh, the theater audience for 13 year olds and their bored moms on their phones and I you have to understand I'm really unsure of how that's going to turn out not even skeptical it's just like how is this going to turn out I I see it working because I can see a lot of things that you can cut from the game that would still work in fine with a movie. It's just, it's that, and look, I know I always rant about the weird, like, wedding scene and, like, you know, uh, Tom and a uh, big old girl, whatever the fuck, they go to the resort and the weird, like, you know, they mix in all that weird humor with the Sonic and, like, Robotnik plot. And that's fine, I get it, but it's going to be extra weird when we're pulling from the plot of SA2. The game about a government conspiracy and an abandoned space colony and pointing a giant laser at the moon. And we're going to be cutting back and forth between that and, like, the wedding reception. Well, okay, it's not going to be another I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You, know what I, you know what I mean. Not I know. literally. I pissed on the fucking moon, Obama. 
and then you cut to like yeah Tom's shopping at Walmart you know <laughs> like what is this gonna be like <laughs> I, I think if anything the my my guess is you really focus that character forward and you don't really look back to that kind of more sillier aspect and I get I get it Sonic is generally a silly character but like when it comes to all this stuff I think this is kind of where it has to like focus on the more like plotty type elements because here's what I'm immediately thinking it's like okay Sonic and all these people are gonna have to try and find out what's going on with gun and everything and doing all this stuff so it's like eventually it's gonna get to some weird weird shit where it's like you're all going up to space colony arc and you're going an astronaut and he, and Sonic and his parents or whatever are just like yeah we're not going but Sonic's like I'll go and then Knuckles, Knuckles goes oh man I left them all at- <laughs> I'll you earlier, oh, shit. I left the oven on do we bring grapes <laughs> do we bring grapes <laughs> Tails goes, no, Knuckles, grapes can't survive in the vacuum of space. Grab him by the collar, what do you mean? So I put him in a container. <laughs> Just pans out to, like, one, a floating container of grapes in space. <laughs> smuggle them aboard. No, wait, <laughs> that's, perfect, that's perfect. <laughs> Knuckles accidentally, like, he's on the surface of the moon. He lets go. They start floating up. And he can't jump that high. And he go. he says the Knuckles thing. He goes, oh, oh no. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Yes. It's all coming. Make together. that happen. It's all coming together. <laughs> the credit. Imagine at the end, the credits start to roll. It's in space. You just see the container float on by in the background. <laughs> what <could happen? laughs> it broke my brain. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, it lands on Mars next to a fucking <laughs> rover. <laughs> Cuts to NASA. <laughs> Good. That's just like hyperventilating. It's the alien school back lunch. There's like, aliens on there's Mars. Like a, there's like a. There's and like, that's what Sonic Four is about. Uh, Eggman builds Metal Sonic to travel through space and colonize Mars to make it Eggman land. There's just okay, like a NASA tech. It just go. It costs like a NASA technician just like. <laughs> okay. Just breathing in a, a, a paper I'm, bag. I'm hyperventilating I'm like, again. So let's sever down. Thank you, second grade teacher. As as per everything in the Sonic movie three, I'm sure we'll come to conclusions after a trailer about that later. Just to be clear, we don't think they're going to tie in any other games like CD or Adventure One, right? It's probably just going to be given the, given how don't, that's gi- not a joke. Gi- given the end credit scene and the logo for the movie, I'm expecting it to it's, be purely SA two based. Listen, Sonic CD. Is the one with Amy and Metal Sonic and time travel. When I said that, that wasn't a joke. I'd love for them that I'd love for that to be Sonic Four. Okay, but anything else, Sonic? Um, I think it's too soon to even get like an announcement of the next yeah. main Sonic game. Yeah. Um, I imagine that you know we already have Superstar, so that's like our two D. So I think the next game would just be you know the next open world. But I think we get a trailer for that like. Probably like two, three years from now. We're probably going to wait a while. You well, know, the updates for Frontiers just ended. Yeah. What do you think for, um... What was it? Like, what, what do you think for, uh... Any other things before, like, Mario and Zelda type stuff? Um, the only other thing is Sonic Superstars might get an update. Because mm-hmm. there's, there's two big NPCs besides Eggman. It's Fang and the new character Trip. When you beat the main story, Trip's the main uh, a playable character. They might make Fane a playable character. Or they might bring back like Mighty and Ray or some other character. So they could do DLC. But Coming again, it, it's like Pikmin Four, where like you know it's a complete game. Okay. Mm. Um, but that's that's pretty much it. They don't necessarily have to do anything. Okay. So this this is where my my fucking fat brain starts going. Uh, Pokemon Legends Two. So, okay, Pokemon's kind of a, a can of worms Yes, I know it is. Uh, no, specifically be, specifically for me. Because okay. you you didn't play... I hate that we even have to fucking talk about this. I, really I didn't do. play what? Gen 5. You didn't play Pokemon Black and White. No, I didn't. Right? Even though that was still on DS. Um, those games are very near and dear to my heart. They're not perfect. But for a lot of Pokemon fans, especially in our age group, 
they're held in very high regard, like Platinum and Heart Gold and Soul Silver. If I ever got my hands on a cartridge, I'd probably play it. Um, so the last time that they remade a game, uh, it was not developed in house like all the others were. For some reason, they gave it to Ilka, who previously only worked on Pokemon Home. And then Game Freak said, "Okay, you're making whole new remakes of big ass JRPGs now. By the way, you have like 12 months." <laughs> That's why BDSP. <laughs> Good fucking luck. That's why the Diamond Pro remakes ended up the way they did because those games were rushed. You know, I'm surprised they came out as good as they did. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised those games aren't horrible, horrible messes, but they're still disappointing. You know, we ripped on those games so fucking hard. I think they deserve it. I don't think Ilka well, deserves do. it. Yeah, I don't think Ilka deserves it. Either, it's, but it's like it's you know as usual. It's not the developers who want to rip on it. It's whoever decides that they have these games have to be rushed out. Those games should have gotten like three, four years of development minimum, and they didn't. And now I'm really afraid that's going to happen to Gen 5 as well, games that I care even more about. Especially since we've had this issue, even with the remakes developed in-house before, where like, okay, Ruby and Sapphire, right? They didn't put a lot of Emerald content in there, like some, but not the big stuff like post-game content, hard mode facilities, um general harder difficulty more side quests to do they put in extra content for sure well, but it's not the same well i also like to think of just like pokemon scarlet and violet where it's like even the mainline games didn't get like the polished treatment that they should have right and yes they get updates in dlc but when we're talking about older games that had to rely on sister versions for updates because you know you didn't have dlc on the game boy advance or ds mm-hmm. um this is a bigger concern for now that they're remaking those games and black and white are in a different position. You know, they don't just have an emerald or a platinum where it's the same game again for the same price. Now with just some more stuff and quality of life tweaks, those games have sequels black two and white two. And like, yeah, they take place in the same setting and functionally they're kind of like just updated versions, but they have even more than that. So, we have two options, right? We either get that as like thirty dollar DLC down the road, where you like start a new save file and then you do that stuff, right, as like a separate campaign, or we just never get it. They only do black and white one, mm-hmm. and we move on to the next thing. When black and white one isn't really the reason people praise Gen Five as much as they do. I have no stake in black and white, as you know. I understand. I'm sorry to ask, but I, I mentioned something completely different. I said Legends 2. Oh, I know that too. Listen, I know that. I want to get Ilka out of the way. Well, okay. we don't even know if Ilka's going to make Gen 5 remakes, or if we're getting Gen 5 remakes next year or at all. Okay. Legends 2, I don't know. Because the thing, when they released BDSP and Legends, remember, that was back-to-back, right? Mm-hmm. But Game Freak didn't work on both. They only worked on Legends. Yeah. But they've also, like, the second wave of DLC for Scarlet and Violet isn't even out yet. It comes out in, like, five days. Yeah. So do we get Legends 2 next year? I think you can get an announcement. It could be that, like, a, a separate team... You know what? I think that's how it worked, though, before. Hmm. Is Team A worked on yeah. Sword and Shield's DLC... And Team 2 worked on... We probably are getting Legends next year. Well, or something I, like I don't know it. about Legends, a complete game next year. But, but like, like a main series game that's not Gen 10. Yeah. Yes. Because there's too much money to be made there. And I think a lot of people had a, a generally positive reaction towards yeah. Ar- uh, Legends Arceus. So I think if you want to do like a Legends Rayquaza or something like that, that's, that's perfectly acceptable. Do you have a specific idea? Because like... It's probably not going to start a new generation, right? With like a brand new no. region and brand new uh, set of Pokemon. No, I'm perfectly fine keeping so, like an older aesthetic. But do you do you have a specific idea for like the setting or the premise? Just old, just kind of a similar to uh, to what Legends Arceus was, which is older version of whatever region that the legendary is from, and kind of like you have to do something to help fix it or. Oh. Well, not, you, you don't even you don't even have to do the 
the the whole like oh coming back from from the future to the past or something like that. You right. don't even have to do that. You could just be the younger kid in that trying to be like yeah. what's going on. I need to help. Let's just have the whole time travel isekai thing going on. And I understand why it's because time yeah, and space is Gen about four. That. Yeah, you have the time and space cuts. Yeah, and so like you could do something <clears throat> if you wanted with uh, like fire and water or like land and sea type shit. Yeah, with. Uh, Rayquaza, so I, 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 I don't know. I, you could do Alola, who knows? I'm not sure, but I would definitely love to see something different. I, and that's enough for me. You know, even if they announce Gen 5 remakes, it's possible that for the next time or two that they do, just like plain remakes, they just keep outsourcing those, the like faithful remakes, yeah. and Game Freak still devolves a, a bigger, more kind of new take on that generation like they did because BDSP and Legends Arceus are both Gen 4. They're mm-hmm. both based on Diamond and Pearl. So I can just ignore whatever they shit out in 10 months and get the other game that even if it looks like absolute dog poop it still plays play well and has a great story and attention to detail. Especially with the fact that Legends introduced something which I just love which is just catchable shinies. Yes. And like because that's what they should be. It's like, oh, you, wow, you heard the jingle, you, everything. Right, there. it's not just a random oh, encounter that has to load. Mm-hmm. Um, I, do you think they're ever gonna bring back Let's Go? Because Pokemon Go has been getting mm-hmm. support still. Like, it's going to get support for years and years. It's not ending anytime soon. Let's Go specifically, I don't think so because I think that that's kind of what the the remakes are kind of doing in itself. The, That's true. Yeah. They're remaking. They could. I'm not denying it, but I don't think it'd be as glowing of a reception as they've already kind of received for for Let's Go, which is like Let's Go was like, eh, it was interesting, but it's not really much. Yeah. Uh, the remakes, at least, people were like, oh my gosh, uh, BASP remakes. Um, other than that, not much. Yeah, the, I guess I think I agree with you because Let's Go was the transition from 3DS to consoles. And they wanted to bring the mobile market. They did it once, and they did, you know. <clears throat> and now we have Pokemon Home is like your hub where you can transfer between the mobile game and the console games. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's possible. The more the more you bring that up, the more I'm I'm there with you. Um, the only other thing, because like, Scarlet and Violet's not getting more DLC. Like this is it. Yeah. You get two waves and it's done. The only other thing I can think of is. Um, we got Detective Pikachu 2, um, and remember, that was a game that was actually planned for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, Probably delayed because of pandemic. Yeah, like, it was announced for the DS, like, a year after the original <laughs> came out, right? Yeah. Um, and that game already took a while to develop. The movie came out, I think I was talking about you with this the other night. Uh, like, 20, 2019. Yeah. 2019. It did, yeah. And there were originally talks of making a sequel. Obviously, not everything always goes through. But do you do you think we get another Detective Pikachu movie? Maybe not even Detective Pikachu. Maybe just like Detective new... Psyduck. Let's go. <laughs> go fuck yourself. Maybe not even Detective. Type I was gonna thing. say Maybe just yeah, like another Pokemon movie. Like yeah, just another like live that would action. be kind of cool. Yeah, because they're always gonna make oh. the anime movies like every two years yeah. alongside the the TV shows. Chris Pratt as the lead. I'm surprised they chose Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Did you guys see uh, the Garfield movie no. trailer? <sighs> that was announced like two years ago where Garfield would be voiced by Chris Pratt. I, I saw it. And him. like, the thing is, is it, it almost kind of works. Like, his voice isn't quite deep or monotone enough. Uh-huh. He's still a little too, like, young and expressive sounding. Yeah. But like, it is a kid's movie. even though his performance is okay... I I am now way too overexposed. What like do you mean? he, just to Chris Pratt in general. But oh, now, yeah, because I don't watch because he's in like a lot right? of things. Because I'm yeah. a baby. I only play Nintendo baby games. <laughs> but his performance sounds the exact same as Mario. So yeah. now it's just like, oh, okay, he doesn't really it's have the voice. You've heard so before. now every time you he you doesn't voice have that range yeah. that you need. Right. What else we got? Um. There's other smaller-ish Nintendo franchises we can get out of the way. If I may, really quick. Mm, uh, Zelda movie potentially cast reveal. 
Yeah. Because specifically what I've heard is this is a live action movie. Yes. So that should it, be interesting. It won't take nearly as long, I don't think, to 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 like develop a bunch of like new CGI type stuff. That's true. So I'm assuming like at least a cast reveal next year, maybe movie release. I mean, who knows? 2026, maybe even. I don't know. Any predictions for the leads? I have no. I, I that's the thing. I'm not good with actors, but every I, time someone says Michael Sarah's Link, I lose a fucking vital organ. I I worry. I I don't want Link to be the peppy character that's just trying to make it by in the world. <laughs> no, he has to be a grizzled young veteran. Bro, he's fighting Goma in the Deku Tree. You may be wondering how I got here. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking Tom Holland. I'll kill someone. Oh, that's yes, that's what I meant. Not Michael Sarah. They're all Michael Sarah would be funny though. Exactly. Like, any Spider Man, basically, any Spider Man character. Yeah, uh, fucking. Uh. So okay, we were talking about the, and I was joking at first, but it's evolved into a real question. Um, I already know my answer, but just for the sake of bringing it up on the show, do we do, um, young Link or like an adult Link? And do we go, like, he's the more, like, kind of silly, innocent type who gets into the role of a hero? Or, like, is he already prepared for it? See, so here's the thing, and this is where I think that you could go in many different directions with a movie. If I, if this were me, I would do a three-part mo- series of movies of Ocarina of Time. I don't think they're nearly that ambitious. I think they're going to make their own story. Make it be really quick and done. Yeah. Who fucking knows? Make yeah. one and see how it goes. Yeah, and then see where and to go from there. If you do it, you do it with a double. Yeah. I'd say so. I think so, too. Because I think doing, like, a 12-year-old Link might alienate older audiences when that's kind of what Zelda's for. Yeah. yeah. You're already aiming at teenage, young adult demographic there. Yes. I like the idea of having him be a tough, grizzled veteran, as you said. Yeah, like, grizzled young veteran. Like, he doesn't yeah. have to be, like, old or, like, 30 no, no. or right, but that's, like, something in his 20s, just, like... There's yeah. something to be said that... what's going on? Like, just doesn't get it. Um, I, I don't think any other Link is like this, but in the last two Zelda games, which uh, have sold more than any game you've ever seen, you know, the two most famous Zelda games, Link is... He starts out the story as, like, he's already, like, a war veteran, but he's, like, in his 20s, mm-hmm. right? Like, 25, but he's fought in wars. He's already a hero. He's just, this is where the game starts. Yeah. He's, so, he stormed Omaha Beach with Tom Hanks. It's kind of how Breath of the Wild Pretty starts. <laughs> he he barely of? survived a calamity and then got put to, into rest. Yeah, cryostasis. I, like, I, I, I imagine him linking D-Day. Oh, man, that'd be funny. That that's what Breath of the Wild is. He just he just gets a German soldier with his bow. <laughs> it's what if D Day went Not worse? A guy, but what if D Day but bad? Um. So are we all in agreement that it's probably an original story? I don't think I they think adapt. I game. think so. Yeah. I think it has to be because the thing with games too is when you play a big action adventure game with a narrative like that, that's forty hours. You just don't. Compress it into yeah, you hundred cannot. minutes. Yeah. The the only reason I could say Ocarina of Time would work as a story is because I can see it where there are characters tied to each boss to where you can make a story throughout where it's like okay I have to help this character they have to help that character Link has to help this character and the, and the yeah. characters are doing most of the talking and type stuff where it's like right. okay the, Link is more like the protagonist he's along for the ride. Yeah, he's ca- like and and, I, and the Mandalorian esque nature of him going. Oh, like wait, 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 wait. Facial expressions would work. You, th- say, you think he's actually going to be a silent protagonist? I think that would work better. Listen, I would want that. I think it'd be more interesting. I think but so, But anything that's not the norm is going to be shit on by general audiences. And well, you know how... You know... But here I, I who, here's who is get, that gives a shit. The business executives. Yes. So... I think Link's going to talk. I don't think it's going to be I don't think it's going to be... Well, here's the thing. I don't think he's going to talk like... He could have a line or two. Yeah, like, I'm no, not, I think he's going to talk as much as any other character. Well, I I don't expect him to have a character solely through talking. I don't expect him to be like a wrestler who who has to focus on their promo work and all this shit. I expect him to just be like kind of like the man who's along for the ride and has questions along the way and like like what the hell is going on? Like, so I have to do the okay. I, I'll make sure to 
to do my job like a hero. Yeah, a hero. like a I, I I hate saying this. This is in a million quotation marks. Okay, don't don't point at me. Mm-hmm. Audience surrogate. No, I mean that's what he is. Yeah, that's literally what. But I is. I and I agree with you that like his he's going to have a distinct personality. It's going to shine through. He's not going to be a literal blank slate. But I think he's still going to talk just as much as any other character. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't think it's going to be weird. I think you can do that with Link. Like, it's fine. Yeah. It doesn't betray anything. Him being a silent protagonist is just the way they want to make the games, but Link doesn't have a solid character. It changes every time. So I think he's going to talk, and it's not going to be cringy. It's gonna, they're going to play it straight, mm-hmm. and we'll all get used to it. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Um, I know this is a weird question. Do you think Ganondorf is even, like, a guarantee? Or do you think they do, like, an original villain? So there's two ways you could do it. You could do Pig Ganon, which is just a mindless monster you could make in a lot of regard. Most of the times, he's he's a very intelligent monster and can speak and do all this. Yeah. Shut. But you could do Ganondorf. I, I, would, I would rather do Ganondorf in a proper setting, like the Ocarina of Time movies. You could, but they could do a unique villain just to test it out. Who knows? I I would like them to do at least Pig Ganon, because that's kind of where it all begins and starts. So who knows? I That's my preference, but I don't know. I guess my, my last question for the movie is, do you think they're going to do a tie-in game? And I think the very obvious answer is no. Yeah, no. no. Not right now. It'd be rather difficult to take a movie's plot and expand it to, as you said, a 40-plus hour game. Depending on if this movie does well, we'll see from there. Every Soy Boy Nintendo tuber says it's such an obvious idea, so that tells me, okay... It's not not going to happen. And not not because Nintendo's stupid, they would never do a good idea. It's because it's a horrible idea. (laughs) No, yeah, and I mean, like... You have to have really like you have to have like James Gunn style cleverness to go with that. Yeah. If you don't have that, you can't do it. I I already don't think we're getting another Zelda game until like I don't even. If the next console is coming as soon as we think it is, oh, I'm, it's I'm, not going to be a launch title. I'm betting for at least another seven, maybe six or seven years. Yeah, I think so too. Five minimum. Because they're gonna because they they have to start from the ground up again. And do we have anything else to say on the movie? Um. I predict just... I don't know. I, Maybe just a teaser. Or a nah, soft I, note. I don't think I, we're getting... I'm or just, just like, thinking cast reveal. You think so? Or just like, you know, development in progress. I'm thinking like some sort of dollars. Comic-Con maybe cast reveal. where Or a Nintendo Direct cast reveal. Yeah. Maybe at the end of this... Well, when year. I mean like teaser, I mean like a very brief, doesn't show anything, like kind I, of just I, artsy if, teaser if type anything, thing. If anything, or like a poster, I would. Think. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm hinting at. So. And I'm assuming it'd be like the classic, like Link with his back turned to the camera you and like looking face, at Hyrule yeah. Castle. Nothing used, no details. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Nothing, nothing giving away. Just like this Com- is what you're looking. Yeah, at. coming soon or yeah. whatever. I, that's that's the only thing I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope it's not contrarian of me to think that I don't think we're getting anything next year. Like not even a cast reveal. Could be. I I I just predict it just because. With, with live action, this stuff is going to get leaked faster than it is. That's normally. true. So I'm assuming at least a cast mention of like, hey, this is the cast. That's all I'm yeah. really because all we know now are the director, the producer, and the writer. But notice how we already know those things now. Yeah, yeah. That, that's fast. So like, true. At least by the end of the year, we'll probably have a cast reveal. All right. That's um, just my assumption. So. If we get a cast reel next year, I don't think we even get a teaser. Again, maybe a poster, but not a trailer. I mean, we didn't get one with the first cast reveal, so I don't expect that. Right. Way. I think 2026, we start getting... 2025, we start getting stuff, and maybe that's the release year, too. Probably. Um, we kind of touched on the fact that we don't think another mainline Zelda is coming out for like at least five years. Mm-hmm. Definitely um, not until the next console. Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. We're already almost positive, and so is the development team, that we're not getting another game in the style of Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom. Like, mm-hmm. it might be open world, but it's not going to be that high role. It's not going to be that move set necessarily, that art style or setting. Yep. It's going to be brand new, built from the ground up, probably new engine. Yep. Even that would be something. I would say so. That'd be something very interesting. Or if it, if it does reuse the engine, it's in the same way that like. Mario Maker and Splatoon are on the same engine. <laughs> like, just, you know, Very foundation. They don't yeah. completely different games. 
Um, with that said, even though Tears of the Kingdom isn't getting DLC, or at least they've That's said that important. and I believe it, like, yeah. you know, they don't have to. There's no obligations. No, no. They want to if they don't. I think they took so long with Tears of the Kingdom that they threw in everything they wanted. Anything else gets saved for another game or it's something nice to look at in the art book. I had an epiphany about this. I wonder if you've been thinking the same thing. Hmm. It's pretty obvious. Another Hyrule Warriors. We had one in general that like celebrated the whole franchise. Breath of the Wild came out. We get one just about Breath of the Wild. Tears of the Kingdom? You could. Because there's, there's a very decent much handful of new characters. You and could do that. I, I think it'd be a bit weird to do that. It'd be, like, it'd be very much like an updated... Age of Calamity. Yeah. Well, um, and, you know, the Musou games are fairly ish samey. It would definitely could. it would definitely be Age of Calamity too. It's not gonna feel that different in terms of like mechanics. Could or be um a uh, UI. It could be like a uh, after the defeat of Ganon, you're trying to like slay the rest of the monsters type thing. But right. I, I don't know per se, but I, I would not be opposed to it. I would definitely have as much fun with it as I did the first one because I just love being in that world surrounded by the lore and the, and the history and just those characters. Those characters shine through an Age of Calamity, so I, I would love right. to witness more of just them interacting. So I, that's a win for me. I, I, I do say I have a prediction for Zelda in the next year, and that's uh, we're approaching the one of the anniversaries of uh, Ocarina of Time. 25th, right? 25th anniversary for Ocarina mm. of Time. I think there's something for that, probably. I am predicting a full-on, if not remaster, a remake. That'd be sick. Yeah, and that, if they do so, it's not just going to be a port of the 3DS version, which is already an upgraded version of the original, yeah. but like a I, brand new one. I would like, even as far as, like, th this is always just my go-to, but I don't, I hope you don't mean I mean it in this way, Final Fantasy VII Remake, where it's like, completely different. Is that how you would want it? Not 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 in the way you're probably thinking. Where like I I mean like the game fundamentally works different. Yeah, that's what I mean is do you want the game to fundamentally work and control and feel different? Like it's still like a linear progression as far as your how you go through the story and everything. But yeah, I would I would definitely be interested in something like that because that to me says a lot more for like Honoring the legacy of the game, and honestly, like, because that game has such a following, that, like, if you don't do something to the effect of a remaster, a remake would be the next step for me. Because it's like, it, remastering is the least you can do. And, yeah. like, throwing out, like, up higher res graphics or higher res models or something like that. Yeah, upscale, put it in widescreen if we feel frisky. Yeah. Like, something. And... It, if you really love the franchise and you really love that game, do a, at least a trail like show a trailer in the next year for a remake. Right. Because that would be that's something that I know a lot of fans would love to see. I mean, I've seen a lot of the uh, like the Unreal Engine, like oh, uh, Young Link in Sora's Domain type stuff. Yeah. And it's like. That looks nice and everything, but I wouldn't want the same environment. I would want a completely different environment because yeah, we already know the environment. Yeah, reimagined where it's like, okay, this is the Deku Tree, yeah, but it's not the same Deku Tree you know. Yeah, it's very different, and it's like it's very like it fundamentally works different. Right, and it does. It obviously doesn't have to be the same thing as FF Seven R, where like oh, yeah, it's explained by a different you know timeline. Yeah. Um, it's just a different interpretation yeah. of the story in the modern age. Yeah, just just something for a modern age to kind of appreciate the game. Now, with this being said, we already said we don't expect another mainline Zelda game produced soon. Is this what you want, or is this what you predict? Because if you predict it, it sounds like you're implying it'd be made not in-house. And for something that scale, that doesn't sound like something they just hand to Grezzo to work on for three years. I think that I think that with them doing fuck all <laughs> for the 35th anniversary of Zelda, I think Zelda fans are hungry enough that they they love Tears of the Kingdom, obviously, but when it comes to 
Ocarina of Time, I think that this is kind of one of those things where it's like, you should do it now before it's too late to fucking care. Maybe for a 30th, 30th anniversary, but I would really say at least announce it, and then who knows, maybe work on it later, because this could also save you time and resources to think of what you're going to do for your next game. Right. To where the, when Breath of the Wild was announced, they kept delaying and delaying and delaying it. But what did they do during that time? They did HD re-releases of all these other games to learn from. Right. And so I think that's entirely something that's possible. Is something where <clears throat> they do an HD re-release or remaster of the game, put it on Switch or Switch 2 or whatever, and have it work like that where you just don't... You don't just look at this as a remaster, but a remake. And I think that, that would honestly save them time. Who knows? Maybe the next mainline Zelda doesn't come out in eight years. Who knows? But at least you'll have this to ride out when you're just like, okay, this is what's next for Zelda. You could do an Age of Calamity type thing, and who knows? This My idea might happen an, another year later. But yeah, I'm just saying that for me, what I would want personally is them to kind of honor the legacy in some way because we didn't really get we got a game and watch that's not fucking nothing <laughs> that's fucking a game and watch that comes with an NES and Game Boy emulator and a clock <gasps> the features it is indeed a game ellipses and a watch, and a watch. bottom text bottom text <sighs> but it I, I would I would want that for sure mm. that's something that I would definitely be interested in I don't know if there's anything else to say about Zelda but that's where I would stake my claim on it, being the Zelda fanboy I am. Ocarina, specifically. Because it has such a following, and because it has right. such a... That was, like, a lot of people's first 3D experience with, like, that type of shit. 3D, like, puzzle platformer. And not that Nintendo is necessarily one to ape off the rest of the industry. They're infamous for doing their own thing. But just, you know, kind of as a, a, a cheeky joke, I'm thinking of it like... Well, okay, a game that's like 25 to 30 years old, a huge famous like adventure RPG-ish game with huge scope that has a famous legacy. Besides Final Fantasy VII, what else from that era could we do a full reimagining of? Ocarina of Time is like the next one. It's like right there. Mm -hmm. Ocarina of Time defined everything for the N64 and FF7 to an extent, everything for the PlayStation 1. Mm -hmm. So uh, what's next? Uh, I don't know. Really, don't know. There wasn't that much as far as like anything quite on that level. That, yeah, that got that that got fans. Yeah, with like huge adventure scope, kind of like oh, Chrono Cross wasn't quite there. Uh, uh, no idea. What's next? Banjo Two. Uh, <laughs> oh my God, he got like, actually scared. Look, I know some people are iffy on it. A lot of people prefer Banjo Kazooie. You know, it's it's okay. I know the progression system in that game's weird. His eyes are just glazing <laughs> over. Um, Metroid, uh, Prime two or three ports, hopefully, hopefully one day. I think they're imminent. I think that's something that should be worked on, if not if, already being worked on. If the rumors are are true, then yes. Um, but what I'm really interested in is a new two D game because we know Mercury Steam has been working on something for a while, right? Mm -hmm. Like a couple years, um, but we haven't heard anything. We don't know what they're working on. They haven't announced like what company they're working for or anything or what IP. But Dread came out. What was it? Twenty 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 one. Yep. Um, I remember that direct. Yeah. Listening to that, I became Lemon Grab in in HD in three D. He really did. I wasn't there to witness it, but mm -hmm. my God, did I feel it! One of my many oh, transformations. He shook me the hardest he'd ever shaken me. <laughs> I, <was> like, <laughs> um, I wonder, I wonder if they do another remake like they started out with Metroid Two. Do you think they? Because the uh, Dread brought back the, you know, it's the sequel to Fusion. It brought back the X parasites and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, remake of Fusion possible I, I certainly wouldn't deny it because or do you think they just move on to metroid 6 they do like a brand new they could they they, they really could but I, I i i always think that there's just like so much money to be made from remaking old games mm, there is so yeah. there is it's a lucrative market so i think 
the smart thing to do would be to remake it, then focus on Metroid 6. You want to talk about reimagining legendary games. It wouldn't be like reimagining everything completely differently, of course, but you realize the day that they announced the Super Metroid remake, the planet explodes like it does at the end of the, like, every, the entire globe. The planet will be like Planet Zebes. We will become Krypton. <laughs> We will go like Krypton. <laughs> yeah. Planet Vegeta, just gone. Every, every single person who grew up in the 90s just melts. <laughs> um, that's it for Metroid Kirby. Forgotten Land came out 2021. Didn't get any major updates or DLC. Then we got a remake of, of the Wii game. And the thing you should note about the Wii game is its engine is shared with that of the 3DS games. The same foundation. We don't have a lot of 3DS games. Mm -hmm. And if 3DS games eventually come to NSO, that's like five years from now, if that even happens. So, I'm not saying it's going to be the next Kirby game necessarily, but the chance is always there. They remake Triple Deluxe or Planet Robot, or they make it a two-pack. And then I come, I think they and the day is good. Settle down, Grandpa. I think it would be, honestly, uh, some sort of three-pack. Because they, they like their three-packs, where it's like, you could do Epic Yarn. Because uh, they had extra Epic Yarn, but fuck, tiny shit did that sell. What do you mean a three-pack? I don't... Like, you could do Triple Deluxe... Uh, Planet Robobot? Uh, Robobot and some other third one. Triple Decker. Well, there's something else on the 3S that plays quite like it, because the next one after that, Star Allies. Everything else is like a spin-off. I could do a three-pack, I'm sure. Or just one and just sell it at like 40 or 50 bucks instead of a full 60. 40. Mm -hmm. Or make it $60 and add extra content to it. They could. They did that with... Um... With Return to Dreamland. Yeah. You know, they, they made the villain playable, they gave him his own campaign... And Triple X Plant Robot also have those very lovable villain characters that, you know, they get a whole moveset and start allies and then nothing happens. It's like, we, we can just add this to a remake if we make it eight years from now. Um, other than that, that's kind of it. Like, we don't know what Hal's working on. Um, Any... Are you, are you done with that? or? I'm done with that. There's still a couple small ones I want to get through. Okay. Um, Splatoon, kind of mm -hmm. Splatoon 3, we, we know the, the last, like, huge story campaign's coming, and that's probably gonna be it. Yeah. Um, that comes out this spring, right? I believe so. Um, and then that, that's probably it. Splatoon, that's probably it for Splatoon, Splatoon for a while. I don't they'll think, let that game go for maybe one or two yeah, years. Yeah, they'll keep yeah. it online, but, yeah. you know, update support is gonna end, like they did with Splatoon 2. Yeah. Um... Advance Wars just kind of came out and nothing happened. With that said, WayForward is working on their new Shantae game. Um, okay. And as far as I know, WayForward only works on one thing at a time. So uh, I don't think they're going to be making anything for any other company anytime soon. If Advance Wars comes back with like a whole new game or they remake like the other two, um, you know, three and four, that's probably not going to be next year. Probably. Um, Fire Emblem is weird. They fans have been talking about, oh dude, they're gonna remake like one of the GBA games or the GameCube game. We've been saying this for a million years. They just keep cranking them out. And mm -hmm. like, yeah, they can. But we don't know. Um I put Star Fox on here, but if Star Fox comes back at any point it's gonna be a surprise. Yeah. Because the last thing we had was what, zero, yeah. Again, Star Fox is like F Zero. I don't think it's ever like dead. It's just they want to make a game or they don't. Yeah. You know, like it's I don't. Hard to pin down. Like we can call F Zero dead, but like it's not like Nintendo's forgotten about it. It's just like they don't want to make a new game. But, like it's around. They re-release the old stuff. I what, think Star Fox is like that. What would you think of a Mother Three translation for the West? It's never going to happen. It's just. Okay. If it hasn't happened by now, it's not going to happen. And we keep saying stuff like that, but that's... Right, that Mother happens. 3 is another one of those, like, and they're going to remake F-Zero GX, it's going to have online multiplayer and 4K. It's not going to happen. If they wanted to do an English translation, they would have done it all the way back on the GBA in 2006. If it hasn't happened by now, on the Wii or Wii U or 3DS, it's over. And 
for years now, the the main guy behind the Mother series has said, I don't want to make another game. Okay. And he hasn't. Mother 3 is the last thing that happened. Okay. Um, so, again, Mother is like, it's always going to be part of Nintendo. They'll re-release stuff, but Mother 3 is just always going to be Japan only. Okay. And while we've had the fan translation for years. I know. Um, Animal Crossing, they typically only do one game yeah, per system. They, I think they've said they've, they stopped development on it. Yeah, pretty much d- so. Development's been stopped for like two years now. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, I, you know, I think if they want to make another, they'll just wait. <sighs> if anything. Until the next console, probably. It's been long enough that Animal Crossing could be released in the launch year for the next system. Mm-hmm. Because I don't think a Zelda game will be ready by then. Mario's one of those maybe, maybe nots. So I think, like, your two big games for the launch year, whatever it is, you know, next year, 2026, is Splatoon 4 and Animal Crossing 6. I think those are your big two. Okay. Because Splatoon comes out in the summer, Animal Crossing a little more towards the winter, maybe you get another Pokemon game. That's your first fiscal year. And then after that, you start getting your Mario and Zelda. Um, Donkey Kong. People keep talking about Donkey Kong. Where did it go? Like, it's a complete mystery, and it's not a mystery. What happened to Donkey Kong is, you know, the last game Retro Studios made, because Donkey Kong's been outsourced for a while. They haven't been making it Mm -hmm. in-house. Last time Retro released the game, it was their second Donkey Kong game in, like, 2014 for the Wii U. And then they were working on something, and it seems like the project just got scrapped, and we never heard anything about it. We we know there's been like internal troubles, vaguely, but we know so, and we don't know what's happened since, except we fucking do. And it, I don't know why people act like it's a mystery. Metroid Prime Four was originally being made by, I want to say Bandai Namco, some other company, yeah. not Retro, who worked on the whole Prime trilogy. And then Nintendo didn't like how that product looked. They scrapped it. And they went to Retro. They didn't ask that original development team to start over. They went to Retro and said, just make Prime 4. And especially when you consider that everyone who worked on the original trilogy is probably gone. And they were already working on a project we've never seen. They probably had to scrap it or put it to the side. Mm -hmm. Start working on a brand new game. We're not getting Donkey Kong. Nintendo's not just going to go, oh, we'll do that for you instead. When Retro's already been probably thinking about it for 10 years. I personally have no stake in Donkey Kong, really. I've never had too much of an interest. Yeah. It's fun, but, you know, it's like a lot of people just look at it as like, oh, it's another 2D platformer. And especially with how samey 2D platformers can be, mm-hmm. I get it. Return to money. Like, if you ever if you ever play it, you'd like it, but, you know. I'm sure I would. I'm sure I wouldn't complain. But, but it's like, I think mm-hmm. at this point, you know, because they had Donkey Kong Country Returns and Tropical Freeze, and both games did really well. I think at that point, Donkey Kong is just Retro's baby. When it comes to main series Donkey Kong platformers, Nintendo's not just going to pick up the slack for them. I think they want to leave it to Retro, because Retro's proven they do good with it, and they have a vision. Mm-hmm. So, Prime 4 is going to come out however that turns out, and then they'll get back to Donkey Kong. Okay. Um, I think the only Nintendo franchise left is Mario, because we only touched on Mario Kart. Yes, the only one left is Mario, and I wanted to bring this to the table. I just remembered something. I'm sorry. What? What? <laughs> Why? Why is this on? What? I'm eating. What? Um, did Illumination announce they're working on a Donkey Kong movie or planning one, or was that in my head? I don't think they announced that officially or anything. I don't think anything was confirmed. But it, I mean, it will probably happen probably. at some point, right? It's not like they're going to give Wario his own movie. Probably. I wouldn't doubt it. I fucking wish. I wish they would, too. That'd be great. <laughs> well, hey, I don't know. Illumination made Despicable Me. That's all about Nancy Hero. Pretty much. They could with Wario. Oh, now I'm excited. Wah. But anyway, I think a Donkey Kong movie is possible, but I don't know if that'd be this year. Such Seth Rogen smokes weed with Diddy Kong. They, they made the smoke and a banana joke, didn't they? I don't think they did. Did they not make a joke about... No, not smoking. I, I am old. I have Alzheimer's. All right, let's move we on to Mario. We saw that movie three times. Go, so, Mario. Um, What's our fat plumber friend up to? New mainline game. I don't think we're getting anything next year. Probably not. I doubt it. They take their time with Mario. We just got Wonder. And yeah. I, 
I don't have any way of proving this. I don't know, because who looks at credits for video games? But I would imagine that the team, the teams, the people who work on 2D Mario also work on 3D. I don't think for Mario platformers, they have a Team A and a Team B. I, so I, I think, think if there's a new system and we get any sort of progress or update on that new system, we get news that a 3D Mario is coming. Do you think it comes out first or second year of the system, necessarily? I think it's a launch title for that system. Just launch title. Out the gate, okay. Probably 3D. Probably 3D. Because it's been quite a while since Mario Odyssey. Mm, just and there's been a lot, that, of, yeah. lot of budget titles that we've, we saw in the last Direct. And I think a lot of what can be done with Mario now is... They had a lot of time to think on it. Mm. And they're doing a lot of remakes... They're doing, they've done Thousand Year Door, uh, Luigi's Mansion and stuff. But um, I think it's very possible that if, if a new system gets announced, we see at least maybe a poster or get some news about a 3D Mario. Like in a progress. teaser or something. Yeah. Mario Sunshine 2. Don't get my hopes up like that. Miami. <clears throat> Give me the X. And then, and then there's a crossover a year later with GTA 6. Brian, <laughs> Brian, the X. No, but I actually find that. Give me the X. And it turns out, and it turns Give me out, the X. Mario is the new Florida man. <laughs> jump, Florida man, jump. <laughs> Wahoo! <laughs> Crocodile. <laughs> Any, uh, okay, anything else we want to add or we want to start wrapping this baby up? Uh, I want to bring up, again, I don't think it's going to happen next year, but just to get the juices flowing, I want to bring up the idea of a Mario Maker 3. Mm. You know, Mario Maker, you yeah, have... Where you go with it? Yeah, well, <laughs> I, you only go so I think far. that's obvious, though. Just a wonder perspective? Because of wonder, right? Because, you know, 3D World came out, and that's basically a 2D Mario game in 3D. Then you get Mario Maker 2, and they add a new game style, and it's 3D World. They could always and now we have wonder. They might be able to update two for that. They haven't mm -hmm. updated Mario Maker yeah, two Mario in forever. like three fucking years. Oh, okay, so they would have to build a new one then. Actually, a fake fan. Ryan, you pretend to be a fake fan for the funnies, and I get it. You are our new little member. So I've not proven his worth. That's his new name, new little member. Not only is he implied that Mario Maker two is still getting continuous updates, he said the same thing for Animal Crossing. They stopped getting updates around the same time. I did, yeah. I, I said that they After stopped After I reminded you. No, I already knew that they were do not doing updates. Mind you, I play Animal Crossing still. Did I mishear you on that? Yes, thing? you did. Oh you fucking twat. All right. But yeah, I think Mario Maker 3, you, you get wonder. I guess. It, and there's it's a possibility. I don't see it coming out so soon. Oh, for sure. I think maybe not even for the Switch. I think the next system. Um, but And there's there's still more you can do with, like... Just more customizability for courses. There's more you can do with multiplayer. Keep in mind, Mario Maker 2, right? All the characters still play the same. I My biggest idea for Mario Maker 3 is you finally get characters that play differently. Or you transfer over Mario Wonder's badge system that customizes your moveset. And the way it works is just, like, let's say it's different characters, right? It's like 3D World or Mario 2 where the characters are different stats. Um... Let's say you make a course and you clear it with Peach. If you want other characters to be able to play it, then you clear the courses with those characters too. But if you only clear the course with like Peach and only Peach can clear it, and you're playing online multiplayer, everyone's just a Peach. Mm. And all those characters get like recolors. I would really Could like be. to see that in particular. Could be. Um, th there's, there's a lot you can do with a Mario Maker 3, but... Yeah, I don't think it's soon. I just wanted to throw that out into the ether. I would, I would definitely love the Amiibo costumes to come back. Mm -hmm. I think those were kind of fun. Those were cool. Yeah, uh, including um, Sean the Sheep and a uh, Nissan car. And uh, I think you had Hatsune Listen, Miku in there. <laughs> that's the funny shit, though. That's that's literally the funniest shit, and that's mm -hmm. why it's fun to do. To play a I've always sheep. wanted to play Mario 3 as Shulk from Xenoblade Chronicles. <laughs> <sighs> um... um uh, Drew, you got anything? Yes, I do have more. Okay. Why are you like this? 
I'm just you're asking. Tired. I know you're tired. It's okay. I'm just asking. I'll get your milkies. <clears throat> Fucking patronizing. Um, we kind of already talked about illumination, yeah. so not much there. What um, did you have? Oh, that is a. <laughs> See, it wasn't. <laughs> it's all yelling me. Ryan, I had Bob Evans. It was a lot of food. I have to go to the bathroom. Well, these were our predictions. I hope everyone realizes that we're not profits, but if any of this happens, we totally fucking called it. We totally called it, boys. Everything's happening.